I, I hid back in the wagon again. The okay. wizard made an incredible shot with a fireball and just fried a guy. After he magic missile a guy in the that climbed up in the wagon to beat him to death, he magic missile him in the face. It was actually pretty good. Yes, it was very good. So I moved. Uh, you guys can assume you're out of combat if you want, because you're, you're not. You're not in combat. I mean, he's not stable, but you can get to him and try your heal. Which I think is automatic, isn't it? Or is it checked? It's automatic. This is how many hit points you get. I'm actually not sure on that automatic. It takes a standard action. Yeah, I'm looking at the healing kit thing. It's healer, not the healer kit. I know what I mean. The healer's kit. It's the healer's kit, yeah. Well, no, I mean like the feet. Yeah, I know you have, but you're using a healer's kit. I was making sure a healer's kit is just an action, and that is what it is. It doesn't have a check with it. It actually is specifically so you can avoid the check. Yep. Okay, so how, how much he gets? Six hit points. Still almost like all of his health. Yeah. So level one. I feel good. All right, so now that all you guys are back, um, well, the dwarf disappeared in a flash of light. You don't know where he went. What? But you did see the other, uh, yeah, yeah, that happened. I have no idea that it happened. Neither do I. He told me. Uh, you, the dwarf is gone. You and the wizard both saw the flash of light, and the door, well, you might have not noticed, but the dwarf did disappear in that flash of light. I didn't see a flash of light. I was hidden in the wagon. Is everything else dead? Yes. Uh, yes, everything here is dead. Dead or gone. Except your 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 uh your donkeys. Okay, I wobble up to a standing position and uh, clap Lazarus on the shoulder and say, "Thank you, thank you." You guys oh. both know that the other guy was dragged off this direction. I'll tell the guys, see if the goblins had anything on them. I'll go to these goblins over by the tree where I was. I just go straight to the leader. Zing, um, we'll go check on whatever the goods were to make sure they're still there. So you're like searching his pockets. Oh, yeah. as you go over there, I'll I'll tell you I didn't see anybody take any goods out of the thing. Okay, that's good. Okay. Mister right. on the leader goblin, um, roll me an investigation yes. check. Oh, it's investigation, not perception for that. Well, yes. you can you can. It's investigation to search a body for stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Investigate perception is like your senses. It's like, what do you feel? What do you see? What do you hear? Investigation is, what do you find? Don't worry, I'm coming around, man. I'm good at that. Oh, uh, don't worry, get, I'm good. Do you not get any plus to that at all? Is it exactly no. that? Yeah, it's exactly oh, that's that. interesting. That's still actually really good. I mean... Because I have perception instead of investigation, but, I mean, that's... It's okay, dude, don't worry. Okay, like, I've got you this. actually do find something useful on him because of that massively high check. Uh, I don't have a picture luck. of it, unfortunately. Sometimes luck is better than skill. Or more important. Okay. Uh, well, it's always find important. on him, uh, let's see, where was it? Yeah. Four gold and 18 silver. That's okay. just the money he has on him. Uh, he is also wearing a, uh, copper bracelet. You notice this. I don't know if you want to pick it or not, but it's a copper bracelet. And uh, in one of his pockets, kind of hidden away, it's a crumpled piece of paper, but it looks kind of like a crude map. I'll take the copper bracelet and the map, and I'll try and wear the map shows. Hey, um... Wait, go on searching other bodies. Potato? Yes? I'm going to actually be searching Hans and Franz if I can. You can certainly search their bodies. That sounds like a pretty good idea, actually. Okay, they they aren't wearing much in the way of armor, actually. It's it is hide armor, actually. But I don't think you want it. It looks kind of messed up from all the stuff that they just went through. I wouldn't want it now. Uh, they have two battle axes because there's they don't each have to. Now there's two battle axes total. They each were carrying. Where is it? Here it is. 
They each were carrying 10 gold. Exactly. And, I mean, you find some various uh, stuff. Nothing terribly interesting. Do you want to hear everything they had? Because they had an axe. Um... Actually, no, you only have one of the horses, because only one of the horses is there. <laughs> you still get the ten gold, though. Actually, one horse is pretty useful. Um, I think uh, I'll give... Because it, you said it was twenty gold total between them, right? Yeah, they were each carrying ten gold. Oh. Okay, I divide that up evenly, and I'll be giving that to everyone, so five gold per person. What? Oh, yeah, are there just four of us? Yeah, mm -hmm. there's four of you guys. Oh, okay. Well, the cool. other two died. Um... <laughs> No, I was just checking. So hey, I get have, well, the one, uh, Hans's pack is still on his horse. But anyway, uh, so after after that, um, and we have one pack to deal with, I'll actually take the pack, and I'll move the pack to uh, Lazarus's wagon. I'll put the pack in the wagon, um, just, just, we'll just in case. just say that, that Hans's body is his pack. How about that? All right, that's fine. So I'm gonna put Hans in the wagon, basically. Keep, keep giving an X, just uh, so we know we don't get confused, or I don't get confused. But that's his pack, anyway. So just in case uh, that becomes useful later. Um, and then my question is, actually, I would go over to um, go over to uh, Jack as he's searching, and uh, uh, ask ask I'm Jack not if he's even over there by now. All right. Well, well you're, we're searching all the goblins, right? Uh, yeah, I'm, well, I mean, he's searching that goblin, he's taking a long time to find stuff. Really, I'm just going to say I search these three goblins up here, in the, this the... upper area real quick, and by the time I get over here and I'm searching over here, he'll get over to me, but what do I got to do to search these goblins? And uh, get just just give me one intelligence check. One intelligence check? I don't get to do an investigation. investigation check. All right, investigation. That's at least a plus four. Um, no, that's double. That's plus six. That's six. Take that. Ah, oh, crap. That's average. It actually passes on the goblins, so. That's average. It's three that's goblins. It's an easy check, just so you know. Ten is an easy check. Yeah, I know. Uh, you find a total of two silver and eight copper. Okay. What what other stuff do they have on them? Uh, well, let's see. Goblins. Stuff all goblins carry. They got... Well, there's two short bows, because one of them had his bow shot cut in half. They uh, each have about five, air, five uh, arrows on them, not very many. They each have a scimitar. It's a regular old scimitar. And uh, they, their armor is nothing you would want. It's leather armor, but it's goblin-sized. So it's small have, armor. They do have a shield. Each of them do have a shield, but none of them used it. A shield. Okay. Uh, and... Yeah, so as I'm looking through and you come over, I say, yeah, what can I do? Okay, um, well, I, I had something that I noticed in, in the battle, and I wanted to I wanted to ask you about it because it just kind of confused me. Um, it I seemed, might not have seen it. It seemed to me that the goblins were very, very intent on those two and taking specifically them and not us. Almost like they knew them already, and this wasn't just a random ambush, it was like very premeditated on these specific people. I would like to make an insight check to whether like how logical that is. That's, if I can do that. Give me an insight check. Alright. Take this, motherfucker! Ah, shit! <laughs> hey, hey, guys. My skills are so average! It could happen. Okay, anyways, keep talking. I, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just listening. Um, well, I mean, I mean, that's really the gist of it. It's when um, I was watching the, this fight go down and the uh, the our employer fell, all the goblins were celebrating like crazy. And then when you uh, took a few hits and you also fell over unconscious, they didn't seem to really care. So just from that difference of uh, reaction to uh fellow members of our group it's it's almost like they the goblins uh or or perhaps our employer did something the goblins really didn't like and they were out for some kind of revenge which was why i was going to ask uh maybe uh all of us together might want to have a look at what they were actually transporting okay uh mm, that's a pretty decent idea how about this first we uh collect 
collect uh, all of the goblins' belongings, we can throw them in the cart. So, I like your idea. I like your thinking. My thinking right now is, first, let's gather the rest of the goblins' belongings. Um, I think uh, we should investigate the goods. I also think that if there isn't anything terribly crazy in the goods, then, I mean, we just continue on and bring them to their destination, because I'm assuming that he was looking to sell them. Um, and we can... I don't know if we sell them on his behalf and just hang on to the money. Well, I don't know where he... Like, I don't see his body anywhere, so... I'm a little confused by that. But anyways, I think we should at least finish the job. Um, and then... Uh, also, when we get to uh, Fandolin... Uh, with bandits around like here, I'm assuming they could use some weapons. They're running to the southeast from here. Thanks, Lazarus. We'll keep doing this in a minute. I think I think really let's just finish doing this work first and then uh, let's reconvene for five minutes if that's all right with you. It sounds great. Sounds like a plan. All right. All right. I'm gonna Ooh. help get everything get uh, all together. Um, I'm, I'm gonna need uh, from Lazarus. Uh... I'm gonna need some slight elaboration on that, on what you whispered. He just said. No, he whispered something. To me. Oh, okay. Anyways, <laughs> when he whispered something to you while he's typing it up or whatever, I'm gonna just continue going around to whatever goblins are not. I'm even gonna go to the goblin that he was at, and I'm gonna make an investigation check, unless it's totally pointless, in which case we'll pretend that I investigated, and found nothing. You can certainly try. All right, I will throw an investigation check out there. You see me carefully look through his body. Quite carefully. You find two copper that... Uh, Sweet. That Sweet action. Can. I'll take two more copper. And then um, I'll go ahead and just go through these other... Whatever other bodies that um, uh, Rex is not going through. Because he hasn't really done anything or maybe just hasn't had the time to say it. You know, I'm... I know we all, you can only do one person at a time. To Lazarus, maybe you should remind them. What do you think, Rex? What? I'm hiding uh, in a... What are you doing right now? Hiding in a wagon. Hiding in the wagon. Okay, then we'll continue doing this. Um, then I'll go to these next four goblins that are out of, out of the wagon. Do I need to make four checks or one check? What do you want me to do? Just a second. I found a horse. I give the horse a pat. Okay, uh, yeah, it's a horse. Uh, the packs, uh, there obviously a pack was on it. It is not there anymore. Yeah, yeah, no, I was just saying I give it a pat on the neck. Yeah, it, it, appears, like, it, it appears pretty like, uh, like, you know. Docile. Well, kind of, it also appears that it's kind of stressed out. Okay, I'm not trying to unstress it. Um. Do you want me to make a roll for these next four goblins on an investigation or what? I can't spill it all. Uh, roll one check. One, one check. What do I find? What don't I find? Uh, you find... Let's see, that's those three goblins. No, those four goblins. Four, yeah, the one on the upper right and the bottom. Eventually I'll get to the one in the cart when I find out that there's a dead one in the cart. With that check, you find three gold. Eight silver. Three gold, eight silver. What else in like weapons and other stuff? Uh, they each have a bow. They each have a scimitar. They each have goblin-sized leather armor. They each have uh, about five arrows. I'll assume five just because that's easy. And uh, a short bow. I think I already said that. Yep. And that's really all they appear to have on them. All right. And I'm taking my time in doing all this, but I'm basically I'm going to take those back to the cart. Even the golden size leather armors. Yes, even the small size leather armors. A tailor may want that leather armor. I don't know. We've got a cart. That's my. I, I was I was just I was just asking. I'm not saying you can't do it. Yeah, I know. I'm just loading up. I I'm like we've got a cart. We're going to go back and sell the merchandise, which is why I told the dude. I I said well, I figure we may do that. So. We might as well load up the cart. You know, it's not like I'm putting it in my backpack. Yeah, as, uh, so. as you walk by Lazarus, he reminds you that his healing is not magical, and that basically all he's done is plug your holes. 
Okay. You shoved herbs and stuff into your wounds and stuff. It's keeping you alive, but if you can, if you do something strenuous right now, it might not be so good. I mean, is that a mechanic or what? Am I missing something? It's it's flavor. Oh, okay. No, that's fine. I, yeah, I'm taking. Like I said, I'm taking my. No, I. To, I appreciate the transparency on that, but I'm taking my time to uh, do all this work. And I am doing work, but I'm taking my time. But I'm doing work. Yeah, he's just reminding you to, to not do um, it. And, uh, and I, you know, so, you know, I'm mostly just trying to carry all the stuff in my arms. I climb the cart and put him in, or actually I put him on the cart and I see him cowering. I say, hey, I think uh, the, the little fight's over, uh, Mr. X. You done a hell of a job with a fireball, or firebolt, whatever you call it. And I flump all the stuff on, and I see the goblin, and I say, Huh, looks like the goblin got up here. I climb up onto the cart, and I examine that goblin, or stuff. Ah, uh, you find one gold and two silver. And the rest of the stuff that I said every goblin has. Which is a short bow, a scimitar, and a small side leather armor. And a shield. They all have a shield. So, are you guys not wanting to go try and save the guy that got dragged off, or what? And you say that I don't hear you because I'm over at the cart. Zing turns to look uh, to look at you, um, and actually will come up to join this conversation. I say that, like, while I'm near the cart. Okay. Oh. So uh, if you say that while you're near the cart, I look at you and I say, well, I was just in the process of cleaning this up and then deciding later on what we do, because we're not really in danger. I don't think we're in danger at the moment. So I, I am, I'm one for closure here. I have a question. Um, what happened to the other guy, by the way? Because I think I was knocked out during that. Uh... The dwarf was there. I got him back up. I looked away to go help Blackjack here. Turned back around after a flash of light, and he was gone. Zing stares at you, and then looks around. And uh, can can anyone else corroborate that's kind of what happened? That was after the uh, their leader's body exploded on me. Okay. It So, did the leader's body exploding kill the dwarf? No, no. No, he was back on his feet. So, he was fine, but though a blinding flash of light happened, and then he was gone. Yep. That sums it up. Zing stares at Jack, just like, what the hell? And then uh, glances over off into the trees, and then back at them, and, uh, and thinks for a moment. As you're thinking, Black Jack says... What did you find on him? I mean, I did find, like, a map. Is that all you found? Yeah. And that was on the, the, uh, the leader goblin, right? Yeah. Okay. So our employer vanished in a flash of light. Hey, uh, Chris, passive insight. Well, what? I have a passive insight of 16. Well, what? He said all he found on him was a map. Well, when he I said that, you're pretty sure that means that's all he found he thought was useful. You assume maybe he found some money or something. Maybe he just didn't mention it. Well, I was literally asking for all the things, so... Then in that case, if, if my interpretation of what he said is, yeah, that's all I found that's useful, then I would just say, and so that's all you found. I mean, I found some money and stuff, but... Money is useful. Stuff being... A bracelet. Oh, okay, well... I was unconscious when all that happened, so... Um... A bracelet. Yep. Hey, um... Okay. Sorry, no, oh. I don't want to talk over you, Jack. No, that's fine. I, I just said, okay, I'm thinking, well, no, flash of light, bracelet, I don't know no magic stuff, really, but what about that? 
I don't fucking know magic stuff either. Here, but. here's 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 what I was getting at. We have two people that these goblins were were in my opinion gunning for. Um, I wouldn't say oh. I wouldn't actually say gunning. I would more like say they were aiming for. They they seemed particularly. Zing will quietly pocket that money. Um, they seemed particularly interested in going after these two specific people. Um, and you said one of them we, we saved from getting hurt by the goblins any more than they were, and he vi- vanished in a blinding flash of light after the this battle was over. Uh, no, no, not after it was over, during it. Just during it, okay. I feel like there are some major shenanigans afoot here, and uh, I'm not sure who our employers were, but they were definitely letting on not the entire... I, I want to look at what, what they were actually transporting, is, is what I'm getting at, because yeah, I feel like yeah. that would give us some answers. You did say that. That makes sense. Um, before you do that, here you go, everybody, and I divvy up some money to everybody. I give uh, each other character... One gold, two silver, and two copper. One gold. Oh, no, no, no. One gold, one silver, and two copper. Got it. All right. I think that's right. If it's not, then I just get extra money. I don't know. He, here, here's, here's another point I wanted to make really quick. Sorry to interrupt you, Lazarus. Um, if if this one If this one guy... Like, these these two people, uh, I'm not sure what kind of company they held together. If this one guy has the capacity to randomly vanish in a flash of light, what's to say his friend has the same sort of ability? Maybe he's just fine, and going after him would put more hazard to us than help to him. Like, we don't really know who these people were. I don't think going off into the underbrush after them would really ass- assist us, even if we wanted to. Because, I mean... Until we find out more about them, uh... You see yeah. Lazarus walk away from you while you're talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, no, that's a good idea. He's he, he's taking care of that, that log, which is, we're going to need to go around at some point, so that's fine. All right, uh, Jack, whenever you're ready, let's uh, have a look at those goods. Um, I'm curious real quick, and we're right here. So I open up... Uh, Hans's pack and see what's in Hans's pack. Ah, yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's something in there. You find inside an explorer's pack. Okay. Uh, you also find uh, where was it? There it is. You find some. You find some fishing tackle and a fishing pole that like separates okay you also find some common clothes a couple sets of common clothes okay um one more additional length of rope okay a case for crossbow bolts and there are 15 crossbow bolts in it and you also find a uh, where is it? crossbow. Uh, you find a hand crossbow. Oh, sweet action! And I I reach in and I say, "This is just what the doctor ordered." And I, I don't, <laughs> yeah, that's not really what I would say. But uh, anyway, I say, "This is just what I needed." As I pull out a hand crossbow. You also find a flask. There's something, and there's something in the flask. Um, I'm gonna. Pop open the flask. Uh, well, I set the crossbow down. I'm assuming that I sheathed my sword, just for the uh, record. Sure, sure. Um, I set the crossbow down. I take the uh, case of bolts out, and I set that down. I reach in. I open up the flask, and I give it a little whiff <sighs> to smell it, to see if I know what it is. Uh, make a will save. A will save? <laughs> <laughs> oh lord, I don't think I'm proficient in that. This is blows. You don't. You aren't. You get that later. Thank you for... No, it's I don't an, get that It's an easy will save, so... You do I think not. that's what it is. You, 
you but do I get like a perception to see what I if I know what it is? I do. I am trained in many different skills and tool sets. Oh. Hey, can I jump off? Or are you gonna need me for a little bit? Being trained in a particular like saves. I'm trained in a poisoner kit. I'm trained in a poisoner kit. Oh, you're trained in a poison. You're trained in poisoner yeah. kit. Okay, you do recognize that it is the smell of a uh, a poison. Okay. Hey. But Ooh. you still breathe it in, and hey, I'm know. gonna leave unless you guys need me to stay. Uh, you're not gonna have any other encounters tonight. Anyway. Okay, I'm oh. gonna go to bed. All right, see you later. Good night. Yeah. This, this encounter is not supposed to take this long. Welcome to my life. Um, well, I did throw a lot of enemies. Am I able to identify it though? It was also the first encounter we've done in 5e. Yeah. I think they'll get faster. Yeah. They will. We yeah. had to look up a bunch of stuff. Yeah, it'll get faster. Am I able to identify it using some sort of skills and or my knowledge on poisoner's kits or what else? I don't know. I've got so many uh, skills. I don't believe there's any actual poisons in 5e that have names. Well, am I able to identify what's in the bottle? And... Yes, but I don't have a name for it right now. Oh, okay. Hmm. So you might as well just call it Lot 001 or something. So I'm... So I am able to identify it. So it's been identified. Yes. Okay. What does it do? What is, What does it do? Yeah. What does it do? Uh, you can apply it to a weapon, and it will do. Uh, when it hits an enemy, it will cause them to take two ongoing poison damage. How much? So how many uses are in this bottle here? Uh, the fast. The flask is fairly full, so probably like twenty. 20 uses. Holy Jesus crap. Christ. <laughs> Holy when I, crap. When I, when I take the whip, when I take the whip, I go, ah. Yeah, you, well, the thing is, you also, <laughs> as you do that, you realize you are fainting from the smell of it, so you close the flask and probably faint. Yeah. Oh, and probably faint. Ah. Oh. I go, ah. Can I try to catch the vial, by the way, uh, if he's if he's fainting it's, while it's, it's in his hand? Flask. It's a flask. It's not going to break. Okay. Yeah, you try to catch yeah. it anyway. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I try to catch it anyway just to avoid it from up. spilling. Give me an acrobatics oh. check to catch it. Okay. This is stupid. Grumble, grumble. This is grumble, grumble. Mm. This is what's taking so long. What's Here the, uh, what's, what do I roll? Uh, sorry. It's acrobatics. It's acrobatics check. It's on your sheet. Like, when I say whiff, like, I waft it towards me, like... That was enough. I mean, two ongoing poison damage is, uh, kind of hefty shit. Yeah. Yeah, but it, if the poison wouldn't, like, faint you... ...being in your bloodstream... ...and it would just do damage, then... Question, because this is anyway. confusing me. Um, proficiency bonus for everything in this edition is related to your proficiency bones on your character sheet, it's right? It's your level, basically. If you're proficient, no, it's not your level. Yeah, it's related to your level. It is related to your level, but yeah. it's not your level. It's directly related to your level. It's... Your overall level, yes. Yeah, it's basically a plus two now. If you hear proficiency bonus, it's plus two. Okay, understood. I was getting confused. If you're, if you're proficient right now, you get plus two. Okay, understood. Got it. Thank you. No problem. Um, but yeah, so I, I wake up and I see that you caught it, I guess. I'm assuming that it's a quick faint. Yeah, you just kind of went down and were like, ah. I'm like, oh, that's the smell of victory, uh, gentlemen. Zing would be quick to hand it back. <laughs> he was just, it, it was obvious that he was just making sure none of it spilled. I have encountered this once or twice in my past endeavors and in my forensic studies. This here... It's a poison of minor poisoning. And I put it in one of the... You see me put it into my trench coat. I'm quite thrilled at this. And I say, does anybody mind if I take that uh, hand crossbow and those bolts? Zing shakes his head. No. Oh yeah, the other guy's chopping wood. But yeah. I, will, I will let you know, Jack. Um, I do have darts. And they can be used as thrown weapons. And if you have a poison, it might be a good use for me to poison tip darts at some point, just in case. If you if you uh, wanted to share that for any reason. Do you have uh, a vial or receptacle that would be possibly? Hmm, Not this time. 
None at this time. Would you have to use one for each dart, like, individually? How would, how would you use that in battle? Just curious. I think... I wouldn't use it in battle. I would use it if we were playing on ambushing someone. I would make sure I had some kind of, uh, like, mask so I don't, like, faint or get knocked out while I'm trying to apply it. I don't think you have to worry about it that bad. Well, I mean, just to be, just to be sure, I would hold... I would say that before a battle, just tipping a dart and then, um... Throwing it at, at someone just to give them some poisoning um, would be a good idea. That way, they're not expecting it. I can be very accurate yeah, I understand. and I understand. not waste any poison. Even if you did waste it, it's fine. I was just wondering if there's there's quite a bit of, of poison here. I'm thinking that it's possible if we maybe go to the store or find some sort of uh, specialist, as you would. Uh, there may be the opportunity of finding some vessel in which storing your darts in. Each one may be already have all of the poison all over it we don't add I, I just wonder i don't know if that thing exists but we can go uh examine later i think we need to continue examining the rest of the goods okay i'm gonna make a note to investigate poison dart canister some sort of canister or vial of storing i don't know if it exists or not maybe we can get somebody to make something okay who knows seems like a good idea uh, let's go investigate this cart of goods. All right, sounds good to me. Um, Lazarus, what is your insight? I have none. You have no insight. No. Well, no, I have. A, I have a plus one. Plus one. Okay. So I'm walking over there and I see him. What's he doing? Just describe it briefly. Who, well, I, you're watching. Wait. I, I'm looking at Lazarus at? as I'm walking this way. Uh, he is trying to, uh, give me a strength check, Lazarus. He's trying to pull something out of the ground. Pull something out of the ground. Okay, I don't, uh, like, I don't think I would say, what, what the hell are you pulling out of the ground, or what are you doing over there? I, I'm just, I'm just gonna be focused. I see him doing something, I assume he's doing he something. He to pull it out of the ground. You see him, like, think back, pulling up a hammer. You recognize it was the dwarf's hammer. Oh. Huh. He left the hammer. That's weird. Yeah, I don't, I don't oh. think he'd leave this thing willingly. Okay. Does he leave a shield or anything else? I, I would I see him having a shield. I don't think. Oh. Okay. He had one in his picture, I think, but he didn't. Uh, actually, if I see him doing that while I'm walking this way, I'm going to turn to uh, Zhang and say, "Just a moment. I'll be right back." As as he's walking away from it, from me, I would um, tell him you might want to check with the wizard to see if that's actually a magical hammer. Uh, okay, I'll let uh, Lazarus know to ask him. Okay. Um, I'm going to investigate this area, this general area, to see if the uh, dwarf left anything else behind. Okay, then give me an investigation check. Oh yeah, that's more like it. Oh, oh that's a good check. That's a really good check, actually. I okay. sift it's through the grass and the trees, this and I make these kind of faces, and these kind of faces, and those kind of faces. In that square, you can see, up in, in the dirt beneath the uh, beneath the leaves, you sweep the leaves away. And you see two footprints, and uh, you're pretty sure they're the dwarves from the, from their size and such. Okay. And, uh, you notice they have like little scorch marks around them, and he's not there. And it looks like he walked there and was just gone. Okay. Mm. Um, I look down and I. They do not look like fire scorch markers. You are unsure what would cause these scorch marks. Um, is there a way that I can attempt to determine what would cause those? Uh, you'll have to give me a knowledge check of some kind. You'll have to decide. My only check, my, the only one that I can think of is Arcana. You can give me an Arcana check. Unfortunately, I am not trained in that, so I only get plus two. Hey, not so bad. Maybe I know. Uh, judging by the way it is on the ground, uh, and some of the stuff, magical things you have run into in your line and of work. And you see me lean down and smell into the grass. You get a keep going. Your nose. No, keep going. I'm just describing how I'm doing this. But ju judging from all of your experiences, 
uh, you're fairly certain that, that he was teleported away. Hmm. Hey guys, I, or gentlemen, I believe I have discovered something. I will be there swiftly. I walk back over to where, um, uh, Zhang is getting ready or beginning or whatever to investigate the cart. And I say, based on my experience, and again, like, I'm like somebody, I'm, I forgot to mention, like, I guess I assumed that everybody realized it based on the, the original description of the character, but this guy's maybe like in his early 40s, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Hanging out with all these like teenagers. Um, he, he says, uh, based on my experiences, I believe uh, he was teleported away. It had that, that, I don't know, that ether, the ether smell. I can never pronounce that word right. Or at least how I'd like to pronounce it. I don't know if this is related or not, but he kind of struck me as being... So having some kind of, like, holy... Not... I don't think aura, just, like, gait or, or stance. The first thing that came to mind when I saw his weapon and the way he carried himself and his armor... It, he struck me as a paladin for some reason. I'm not sure if that at all has anything to do with anything. I would like to recall my uh, perception of him and use my insight uh, to, to attempt to validate or qualify what he's saying. Well, you're trying to remember something. Yeah, but I'm also trying to make a determination based on what I remember. And I know that that may be two checks. That's okay. It is. Uh, first, it's, it's a straight intelligence check to see what you remember. Okie doke. All right, then I need a insight check based upon insight or investigation. Insight, either one. They're the same. They're the, oh, it's the same number. Yep, and that's that's my insight. Know, I still need to know which one you were using. I was using insight. Insight, okay, because the DC is different. Oh, what? Oh, I wasn't really. If I say like... use A or B, the DCs probably aren't the same. Okay. Okay, yeah, but just that is as... a super awesome check. I agree That's what I'm th doing. That's how I work. That's how I roll. Um, you do remember on his armor, you did see uh, the mark of Moradin. Which you easily recognize, because everyone recognizes that. Yeah, but I'm asking, based on what I saw, is it a reasonable inference to infer that he was a cleric or paladin or of the holy duty? Uh, you don't remember him doing anything that would make him necessarily holy, but it's entirely possible, based upon the way he held himself, that he he did something along those lines. It, it's okay. very possible. So I look uh, to Zhang and I say, now that you mention it, I could understand where you're coming from. He did have the crest of Morden on his armor, and he held himself in such a way that it almost proclaimed that he was a poss he was, at some point in time, maybe he's had the experience of being in the holy duty. Hmm. Anyways, uh, shall we investigate this card? We shall, um, by your lead, sir. By my lead, motherfucker! I'm going to be aiding him with whatever checks he needs to make in here. Shazam! <laughs> okay, so what was this check exactly? It is to investigate the contents of the goods. Okay, so you guys give, find... Give me, give me the logbook, Captain. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to start typing everything that's in there then. Let me really get out my magnifying list. glass. I roll a crit twenty. I, I figured that's that's what that's what I felt. I'm just gonna type it so everyone can see it. I know. I, and I, I'll pretty much. I don't think there's any reason for me to hide anything. Okay. So, so the totally first cool things I'm gonna include are the things for the most part that I've already told you about. So there's. Well, it gotta be specific because I know we had barrels, but I didn't know what were in the barrels. For example. Okay. There's twelve sacks of flour. Of flour. 
I think we've done that before where flower was spelled like lower or there was a joke about it or dragon or something. It's either deja vu or I thought somebody misspelled something wrong once. That's more Jack's favorite. These are, and this is the two big kegs. You actually figure out what they are. And they're big. They're, they have a lot in them. Okay. This is, this is this has gotten more fun now that my character has become useful. What the hell? It's mining equipment. As I'm reading it aloud, and you say, "What the hell?" Yeah. Okay. As I recall in the area, I think there is a, an old mine somewhere, but I don't know much about it. Oh, right. Actually, can I make a history check or some sort of check to figure out about a mine? Uh, you can give me a history check, um, but I, I'll need to give more information than just I'm making a history check. Yeah, I guess um, I'm making a, more of a geography check about the area and what lies around Phandalin. Like, whether could there be a mine in the area or something? Well, yeah, I guess, because you had said at some point the cart is full of mining supplies plenty of times. So, I mean, like, I'm, I'm already assuming that there's a mine nearby. Um, but I'm that's really the reason why I'm trying to understand the area of Fandolin. So say Fandolin plus minus 50 miles radius or something, you know? Okay, well, give me a... Something like mm, that. Yeah, just go ahead and give me a history check. And, and I'm not the most historical person at the moment until I become a bard. So we'll see. Oh my gosh! I know everything! <laughs> uh, you do know that in the mountains in this area, there are mines. There are quite a few, actually. Okay, no, that's 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 good. That's a better way of doing it, anyway, than just saying yes. There is the mine of Fan Fandelver, blah 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 blah. Okay, that's cool. Well, I I'm answering your question. What else do I know about the area, though? Because it was really just about the area of Fandolin. What else do I know about the area of Fandolin? Uh, With that check, whatever it's worth. Um, Even if it's unimportant details, give me some details. Oh, I have to find where to describe Fandolin. I got a twofer, guys. One in four hundred chance. You wouldn't know that. And I'm not particularly up and up on history. I, I mean, I don't have a problem. I know. I'm trying to like, okay, so what part of stuff in here would you know just from reading stuff? And think about also that I looked at the map. I don't know if that helps or doesn't help. Could you look at the full map that has all the stuff marked? Uh, I looked at whatever map was in the store of the area. Like, I just basically said I'd go to a store and look at some maps. Oh, yeah, okay. That would, you maybe just, I, maybe I also, the area. maybe there was a map of the town, too. I don't know. No, uh, I mean, I, I, well, I was more asking if you saw the map that's in the adventure. I did see it very briefly. I only saw it long enough just to get an understanding of kind of where we're going and that, in my mind, my character knows where we're going and that there was planes basically involved. You know, it, okay. but... But maybe my character actually looked more at some details, or maybe he also happened to look at the map of a town. I don't know. Uh, or maybe okay. he knows some details from okay, somewhere. Well, what do you know of Fandalen? You know that the Fandalen is built on the ruins of a much older settlement that was hundreds of years ago. And it used to be a, a mostly a human town that were allied with the dwarves and, and gnomes in the area. Hmm. Talking about underground stuff. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, an orc horde wa laid waste to the settlement, and this was a long time ago. What's a long time ago? Is that, like, tens like, of years, hundreds of years, or thousands of years? Uh, it would, that, that, uh, that was hundreds of years ago. Okay. And it was abandoned for, a bench is completely abandoned for centuries. But the last three or four years, people have really started reclaiming Fandalen and rebuilding it. Is there a reason? Do I know uh, a reason why well, they're reclaiming it? From what you figured out, <coughs> uh, people were drawn in by stories of gold and platinum in the foothills. Okay. But, of course, a lot of bandits and brigands have come into the area for the exact same reason. Well, kind of the opposite reason. Well, because pe people are arriving there and they're like, oh, there's a lot of people there. It's a lot of people and, hey, maybe they have some gold and platinum on them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that too. Okay, yeah. Um, you... Mm, no, we wouldn't know that. I'm good with knowing whatever. 
Unfortunately, that's really all I can give you right okay, now. Okay, that's fine. Um, and so basically what I tell them is that, yeah, this place uh, that we're going to, it's a region for mining. Um, it's really only been growing in the past five to ten years, and there have been bends around. Um, it's pretty logical. Uh, and a long, long time ago, they had, uh, uh, there's humans and dwarves and other, uh, underground creatures. And unfortunately, the orcs laid waste and then it was gone forever. But like I said, last, I don't know, five, ten years, they decided to bring it back up. Um... I tell them whatever I know about any surrounding other towns or whatever. I don't remember what all is on the map, but I tell them other things that I may know that are on the map. Are there any other important, uh, not milestones, but waypoints or, um... Oh, like what's in the point, area? Points of interest. Yeah, what are the points of interest that I might know of? Uh, well, you know there is... In the forest north of Fandalen, uh, okay. there is a castle up there. You know, you know of it. You would, you would have, it would have been marked on the map you saw. Okay. I, uh, I would tell them that. There, there is a mountain, probably. Oh, where is the scale here? Where is the mountainous region located? I think I remember from it's, the map it was on the south the and east. southeast and the east. It's to the it's to the south, but it's to the south and to the east. Um, is where the mountainous terrain is. Okay. Um, you know that uh, about 30 or so, 40 miles from Fandalen, there is a place called Ice Spire Peak. You know, uh, to which direction? To the e It's to the east. To the east, I'm okay. Bit, mostly to the east. To the east, that's fine. Um, and you have heard legends of a, of a place called Wave Echo Cave. But you Wave know. Echo Cave? Yes, but no one knows where it is. But no one knows where it is. That's fine. Okay. Um, so I'll relay them the information, particularly about, um, really about where the forest is. I won't really say anything about the specific places. Um, I will say that the, you said Ice something peak? Ice Spire Peak. Ice Spire Peak is located to the east. That's one location that I would... I don't like seeing a reveal, but that's one location that I will relay to everybody. Uh, Ice Spire Peak is in the mountains. Okay. The last two things that I put wrote there as to what's in the wagon, those yeah. were in a small case underneath the seat. Uh, those were in the small case underneath the seat. Yeah. 15 gold per person is allotted. Zeng will issue the health post and... Um, to Lazarus, if unhindered. My um, logic is that he's the most durable of us. There's yeah, also but the you're... fact that you're taking some living person stuff and just distributing it. Well, it's more like they're both dead or gone now, and if they want their money back, we can give it back to them at whatever point. So, but what do you, when we find this stuff, you know, it's me saying, uh, I don't know who's finding it in particular. And I guess we're talking or whatever while we're doing this, but um, we find the 60 gold and the one healing potion. What does my character do? I would I just, think... I, I would say just, let's just hold it for now. And if they come looking for it, we've got a 15 gold buffer that's like emergency funds just in case we need it. I think uh, with the potion of healing, um, do you have any more of those kits? Uh, yeah. You oh. Do? I think we should give that potion to somebody else. I don't know who. I said, um, like, let's give it to the was... wizard, actually, because he's the most out of the, like, direct line of fire. Well, if you he's also know that, that know. a potion of healing will magically heal your wounds, whereas the healing kit is a superficial healing. Is there a difference in no. mechanics? Okay. No. There's not in That's mechanics. Fine. Maybe an RP, I don't know. No, that's fine. I'm just checking because I don't want to, like, make assumptions. I hate making assumptions based on rules that I do or don't know. So, yeah, I don't know that... The, well, if the wizard... See, the wizard was out of the way the whole time during that scuffle. He had a good place. Uh, 
he he was in a pretty good position too. And I'm not vouching for myself, and I'm not vouching for you, but I'm saying I really don't know who is the best. But I don't think it's Lazarus. Okay, that's... what do you think? Well, what do you think, Lazarus? What is your opinion? Who do you think should have it? In well, the case we are in an emergency, who do you think should have the potion? Well, you dropped faster than uh, the orc. And if I and but if wizards, I dropped, yeah. I won't be able to give it to myself. Zing silently corrects half orc. Yeah, <laughs> he probably doesn't like being called uh, an orc. <laughs> This character, I hope, is also is not also racist, or it'd be less of a yeah. farce and more of a personality trait. I, I don't really care. I just don't like orcs. It's, it's, it's a kind of a flaw. <laughs> oh right, sorry. Anyway, yeah. Oh, so you uh, said all right. Sorry. Um, uh, I'm gonna vote for you there. Um. I can't remember your name, uh, Zhang. I'll just vote for you. You hang on. I think you should hang on to it. That way you've got two reasonably tough gentlemen uh, that can apply the goods if needed. Understood. All right, I can do that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and add a healing potion to my inventory. And um, with the gold, I think we should... Let's keep the gold in the wagon as long as we're with the wagon. And if... For whatever reason, we depart with this wagon. <clears throat> we may well, want to take it. Well, that's the thing. I'm not. My cart's not going to be able to pull that entire wagon alongside my own. Yes, we have that horse there, and we can pull the wagon. I don't mind helping pull the one, wagon. The, the one horse can pull that wagon. It will just pull it slowly. Yeah, that's what I figure. So I'm just like... I would also say we could redistribute some of the load between the two wagons, you know, based on the amount of horses we have. Oh, right. Are are these, like, dying or, like... Oh, they're very dead. They had a tree yeah. limb. He, so he chopped the tree limb um, as you go... Uh, there, that's a whole tree. You're examining them. I will follow you while we're having a conversation about what we're doing next, essentially. And basically, while you go over there, I'm just, I'm vouching and I'm saying, you know, I think we should keep the 60 gold in the case, personally, up until the point um, that we depart from the wagon. And you say, well, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, I think we should, I think we can take the whole wagon where it needs to go. Or at least to a merchant and I don't know. What, well, you, you found a piece of paper, right? What's the paper say? It's a map. Finally looks oh. at the piece of paper. Oh, that's my. No, I, I said I. Yeah, at he, it a he long looked time. at. A, I'm sure he looked at it a long time ago. I said I did. Yeah, it looks yeah. Like, like a map. Yeah, like a rough map of the area. I ask him. Um, well, no, I don't. I'm trying to decide where my attention is being held. Are you examining the map, Lazarus? Yeah. He, oh. You know what the sixty gold was for, right? No, I don't. I just assumed that it was just 60 gold that they had. Um, Zing will point at himself, point at Jack, and then point at uh, Lazarus and him, and then the two uh, the two people that died in the encounter. Uh, Chris, quick insight check to see if he's accurate. Uh, we're going to have to roll me an insight check on that one. There is a very good chance that is exactly what the gold is for. Very good chance. Okay. Then in that case, I say, uh, well... The other two gentlemen are dead, and the other people are gone, so by your reasoning, ah, sure, I think I agree with you, 15 apiece. Zing nods solemnly and uh, goes <clears throat> ahead and dons that. I leave five gold in, into the, in the chest. Well, still, I don't really like the idea of just leaving those two out this way. Oh, yeah, you want to bury them? It would be, oh, uh, no, yeah. those two? No, no, I didn't mean those two. I mean, like, the people that were dragged off still alive. Oh, oh yeah, we can take, take care of that. Uh, but, like, we literally can't do anything about that right now. You're looking at the map, correct? Yeah. You rec you actually recognize where the map is, and you can see at one end of it is Vandale, and the other is the high road. And you can see uh, between the road that you are on right now 
and and uh, on the map, between the road you were on and the high road, you see an X marked on that map. Is it okay, anyway. a little wit ways in the forest or like on the road? It is off the road in the forest in uh, a certain direction. A certain direction being the southeast of where you are right now. We could probably do something about it. Well, in any case, will you help me pull these oxen off the road in front of the cart first? Uh, sure, yeah. Okay, so we take some time and we pull the oxen off the road. Yep, that needs to happen. I can't get rid of them because they're part of the picture. Yeah, I know, that's fine. <laughs> part of the picture. Um, is it of any importance to either of you to bury these other bodies of these unfortunate souls? I mean, not exactly a religious man. I'm just asking you yes or no. It's it's quite simple, really. Your insight says that if you leave them out, it will draw wild animals. I think we should... You, you don't necessarily want to run into. I don't think we'll draw wild animals in the next hour or two or three or four. Oh, not like, the next few hours. No, of course not. Anyway. Over yeah, over time it may draw out some wild animals, but I, I'm i just wondering... I mean, even the oxen would do that. So... Well, shit, we've got a, we've got a, a cart full of shovels. I mean, it probably wouldn't take that long. We have the equipment for burying them very quickly. Bury, to bury a single body with the three of us. I'm going to use my insight, and I'm going to guesstimate a number, and you're going to tell me how right I, or wrong I probably am, but with three people to dig a hole deep enough that it's not going to attract animals, <laughs> I'm going to say that hole's got to be one or two hours for one thing. And insight, here we go! Okay. How long would it take to with dig a hole people, low enough? With three people digging at a, a pretty decent speed, it might take about an hour for each person. So three hours to dig a hole for one body, or th one hour to dig a hole for one... I don't know which... No, one hour, for all three of you, it'll take one hour to dig a hole to bury one. Ah, body. per body. Per body, yes. And so I turn and I, as I'm thinking about it, I turn and say, it'll probably take us about an hour... Uh, for that gentleman, that an hour for that gentleman, and maybe two hours for that one oxen, and two hours for that other oxen. How valuable is your time? I think uh, it would be better to maybe take the bodies into town and leave uh, them put them in the with... cart. Yeah. Mm, uh, all the oxen. I, th I hate presenting people with problems. Seriously, I really do. I don't have any solutions. Yeah. Uh, the oxen can just go off the side of the road. Maybe, yeah, maybe we just pull them along, I don't know, 100... Just drag them behind feet. the wagon, you know. How about just... Uh, we, you know what, I've got another I've got another solution oh, for the oxen, we actually. away from the road 100 or 200 feet or so. I've got a solution for the oxen, actually. There is oil in the, um, in the cart. Uh, we could just burn them. To be honest, they're just animals. The this other two, is a very dense forest. I'd rather not. We could yeah. find an open bit of land for that's that. A risk. I think. I look left and right. Do I see a uh, open bit of land within two hundred feet? Uh, yes, actually, you see an uh, area that is probably about maybe thirty feet in diameter ish. It's not really a circle, but. Okay, it's thirty feet. In diameter. Put a fire in the middle. How far away is it? Ah, maybe 150. I think. It's, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit uh, ahead of you guys. I take a look ahead and I say, yeah, we could probably do a little pyre up there, a little bonfire up there. It's about 150 feet. It wouldn't take nearly as long to drag the bodies up there and get rid of them that way. What do you say? Sounds good. Okay, we're going to leave the wizard here to uh, just kind of watch the, all the stuff and send the well, signal. Well, I give him a, a job for him. A hammer thing because I'm pretty sure he can do that. Okay, okay. sounds good. He, he would be happy to do that. <laughs> so, um, he, he would inform you shortly later that that hammer is not magical at all. 
Oh, wah, well, wah, wah, wah. As we're uh, pulling the uh, oxen up there to the the pyre or the burning, um, Zing will also want to tr- uh, will also transport the goblins up there for similar burning. No one oh cares. man. Okay, so we bring all the bodies for burning into the the big burning pile. All, will... all all the dumb bodies of people we don't like, and also animals that don't don't have civil rights. It yeah, is. and the. It, to, to the to the big burning pile of scaring anybody who's going along the road. Um, so we start the fire, and uh, I use my tinderbox, whoosh, and I also smoke a pipe. You do not want to stand next to that fire. It is uh, I mean, I step away from it because it's going to be a big fire. There's a lot of oil in there, a lot of, a lot of fat. Mixed with the oil and all that flesh burning, it would not smell good. But anyways, as I light it, I, uh, the fire, I also light my pipe. And I walk away as it, it slowly crescendos. So we're taking Hans with us, right? Hans and Franz to the, uh, Flanden? Yeah, yeah, sure. I think that's the... They're gonna be on my Yeah, they're not gonna be on your cart. Okay, yeah. So... Let me get this straight, though. Um, so we're gonna go to Flandon first. Is that uh, is everybody here in agreement about the? I mean, yep. I'd rather just try and see about those people first, but. But what are you gonna do about your wagons? Maybe there's a stables or somewhere to hold your donkeys, your asses. Mules. Mules. Sorry. Well, what are we going to do about your mules and your wagon and all of the goods that are on the wagon? We're going to chase them into the forest or we uh, spend a day or two in town and come back here and follow the trail? <sighs> and why do we even have to follow the trail? What 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 are we beholden to them for? We've got the money. Because we unlike the you, town. Cause unlike you, I'm not an asshole. I don't think this has anything to do with being an asshole. I think it's kind of yeah. like self-sustainability at this point. So what's self-sustainability at this point? Is it going into the forest chasing after these people, or is it going to town and getting a little bit rested? Uh, if, if, if one of these people were, were, say, my father or someone I'd known for a few years, maybe, but um, there's something weird about them anyway. The whole teleporting thing with one of them... I'm not sure what the deal with that is. I, I think whoever got dragged, uh, the, the the guy that got dragged off can probably fend for himself. Um, ah. And One moment. I go back to the cart, and I look for a ledger. You know, and another thing, Jack, the people that uh, are missing, they might actually be known in this town we're going to, and we can ask them about them. As you say that, I'm looking through this stuff. I say that's my thought. Um, I and I don't know if I need to look because I did such a good job searching the first time, Chris. But I'm looking for a ledger. A ledger. Yeah, something to say where these goods need to go and who they're being sold to or what they're what's being done with the goods. Uh, I think you do find one, but I have to look. Okay, that's great because that makes a lot of sense. If I don't find one, I'm going to be very confused uh, and annoyed. Yes, there, there is a ledger. Okay, uh, what does the ledger say? That's what I'm looking at. Okay. Okay. And I say, yes. I found the ledger! Yes, it says that this uh, shipment should be worth about 100 gold, and it is okay. going to Barthen's Provisions in Fenvaver. Okay. And that is the, that is a trade that one of the main trading that is like the main trading post in Fandale. Barthens provisions. And I go back around and I step down off the back of the wagon and I come back around to see them, and I say the the ledger specifically states that it's going to Barthens provisioners. Um, I think we can go there. It's worth about a hundred gold. Um, I'm of the opinion, just to prove. Even, even I would do this regardless, but just to prove that I'm not an asshole, um, I say we deliver the goods, and then we find out what's about. Maybe we find more about these people, 
Um, it's a mystery. I love mysteries. I'm a bit, I'm, I'm a great fan. I've solved a few of my own in my time, and uh, I think we go ask them about what we do with that hundred gold. Is we say we let either them hang on to it or we hang on to it, however you want to do. But essentially, also just as a note, the wagon can be hidden off the road. I've done it a few times. Oh, your wagon. Yeah. Yeah, but we have two wagons here. Probably the other wagon, too. So, there is just the same amount of odds that one wagon would be found as opposed to two wagons. I'm just being a little reason. what I feel is a reasonably skeptical of those odds. Yeah. I feel like there would be higher odds that either wagon would be found if there are two wagons to be found. I think it'd be a safe bet just getting all this stuff to town where it's needed. Um, but at the same time, there is some time sensitive as, as far as this person that was dragged off. And if we're going to go after them, we might want to do that sooner than later. Plus, if we show up at this town with all of their stuff and not actually them, they're going to be very, very, I would have to say leery. Yeah, but we can be honest with them. I mean, I wouldn't... If I was somebody selling goods, I'd also like to make an insight check on the side out of character. Um, if I was selling somebody's goods, I probably wouldn't name the person and say that I'm selling them for them. And, by the way, my ledger doesn't even mention the people. What yeah, do, I need, do I need to make the insight check on that? Is, is that what reasonable? What do you the people? Uh, what I'm saying is, like, we're the people selling the goods, and we're not really necessarily asking for the money. We may be asking them to hold the money, but I'm just inciting that the people won't be like, Ah, oh, you killed them! You just stole their goods! Well, I mean, in my opinion, we're doing them a service by just bringing this to them in the first place. We could just be like, we were ambushed, we know this town needs these mining supplies, we just wanted to bring them here, and now we're going back out to try to find this person that was taken away by the goblins, or, and, and, and what, I mean, like we, like we said, we think this is some kind of premeditation was involved with this, so, um... It'd be a good place to start going back to the town anyway to see if there's any corroboration with recent goblin attacks or why they th thought they needed bodyguards in the first place for transporting this stuff. I don't know. I just kind of want to get a bigger picture. Yeah, yeah. Out of character, my mine was just to be sure that, you know, the way we're coming across, we're probably not going to come across as fencers who stole all of their goods and just has have decided to sell all their goods you guys don't look like people who do that really all right that's fine i just wanted to if i don't have to make a check that's fine but i want to be sure that people aren't going to just assume that and be like but anyway um i think it would be yeah. good to once the, the, the once we get to the <laughs> town if we report to whatever authority is there and tell them what happened and be just straight up with the, the people in charge that will reflect very well on us and we wouldn't that's have to worry good, about that and in addition to that i say in order to get the goods maybe these goods are needed somewhere what i say we do is we sell the goods we make sure that the money, either through a third party or through us, whichever is acceptable, the sales are properly diverted to the authorities for holding. Yeah, if the if they're not immediately uh, needed by the town anyway, like like with all these mining supplies, it might be. No, I, I mean, what I'm saying is that even if they are immediately needed by town, we go ahead and sell them. We deliver them and then we sell them. The gold is held by a third party who is not the seller, which is us, who is not the buyer, so that they're not holding on to the money in the future. And it's in the best interest of the uh, the, the merchant, which is the people we will find, uh, to keep the money somewhere else out of our hands and the other person's hands. Got it. Okay. Understood. Yeah. Is that a, a, is that a decent idea, or is there something better? I mean, I mean, that's not totally the way I would do it, but it seems to be okay enough. And what would you, how would you do it? Minor altering of details. It, it really doesn't, like, 
we're we're, oh. we're talking we're talking using a seven inch rod to poke a bear instead of a six inch rod at this point. Like okay. I, I'm not I'm I'm okay with your plan. Your plan's fine. Okay. Well, I was gonna say if there's a better plan, I'm all for it. What do you think, Lazarus? You've been pretty quiet. Lazarus is just over there handling the horse and like getting him over to the car. He's oh, cool with uh, it. In that case, I would walk... Oh, okay, so you're getting... Oh, <laughs> you're doing a great fucking job, Lazarus. Uh, wait, I appreciate your uh, hard work and dedication. He knows exactly how to handle horses. Wow, you did really well with that horse. He was a little scared. He didn't mind me petting him. I'm not big on animals. It's but... like he grew up on a farm or something. I mean... It's like you grew up on a farm or something. I mean... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I insight? Let me insight that. I'm gonna insight that. What do I think? Is it possible he grew up on a farm? Yes, it's certainly possible. It's, well, I mean, is, is it extremely likely that he grew up on a farm? Lazarus is Actually, Luke Skywalker of this campaign. Actually, roll a knowledge history check. Why would it be a history check? That's he wouldn't knowledge. know my background. History. No, I was just by by the way you're doing things. I well, well I, I know, know but like. I, Okay, I'll do your it. Name for... would... I don't know. Where would your name have popped up in history? There's my history check, Chris. Nothing. Nothing on the history. Uh, I'm looking at his background. <laughs> what? <laughs> Something on the history for that role? That's what he said. Like... For the... He put the DC to be what I rolled? That's pretty funny. That's unlikely, but, uh, okay. I have to look at something it, very it was... quickly to see if I actually do have to tell you stuff because of that. This <laughs> <laughs> Unexpected well. information is the best information. Are you recording this we're... still, Ross? Is this, uh, is that still a thing? Yeah, I it's... Keep looking, I keep looking to my right as though you're sitting right over there, but, but I, I, I don't know. It's it's totally okay. still recording. It's been live this entire time. Okay, okay. So Do we have you, any people watching this? One. I think uh yes. one of my friends was watching. One of the friends, okay. you are the best. I'm pointing this is a shout out for you, dude. Or dudette. Okay. Continue. Potato. So, what you have heard is you've actually heard his name. And it's in relation to a cobalt attack. His last name, I'm assuming? No, his, his whole name. Lazarus what? Cyril. Cyril. Cyril well, I, only, I only knew his first name. And he single-handedly held off a fair number of cobalt. What's a fair number? Is there an exaggerative number or some number uh, of legend? Well, the, the story says 25, but I have this odd idea that it's been exaggerated. That's probably exaggerated, but I've heard 25... And that based on what I've seen, it's probably less. But still, he held off a bunch of kobolds. Considering, like, how old he looks? But he's from a farm. That was where this all originated. So... And yes, he, and it was on a farm. Ah, it was on the farm. So I look at him and I say, based on his age or whatever, and I go, You're not Lazarus Cyril, are you? Well, that's my name, yeah. Grant oh. Bale. Hmm. Okay. What do you mean best on his age? How old is he? Sixteen. Yeah, he's been super duper young. Oh, cool. You're he's, just he said he was like a teenager, like. You're about the same age I am. And Zing puts his hands on his uh, on his belt and smiles a bit. Well, I mean, considering, considering your picture, do you really look your age, Ross? <laughs> yeah. Half orcs like. Oh, that's age right. half, orc age. half orcs age rapidly. Yes. Yeah. They, they die at like forty. Yes. Yeah. So you're like a twenty-eight or thirty-year-old in in human terms. But they are actually the same age. They're both sixteen. Yes. That's and hilarious. I forgot, I forgot about that whole half orc a aging thing until you guys said something. In which case, I, at first I was like, man, I'm in this group of like teenagers, and I am the only dude here. This is gonna be weird. But, yeah. Okay. Um, so, he, he looks at you says, So, exactly, without lying, how many kobolds were there? I'm curious. I won't say. 
I'm just curious. Uh, I think there were like five or six. Okay, fair enough. That's still quite fucking impressive. Holy shit balls, Batman. Um, I, but anyway, I killed three I, of them. I would. Well, I'm less impressed now, but I'm still impressed. <laughs> It's like, that's honestly what my character would say. I'm sorry. It's not meaning to be a douche. It's just an honest, like, innocent reaction. And uh, he says, oh, hey, I'm not don't feel too person. bad. What? You only killed one goblin and you nearly died. Okay, so you can be a dick as he walks away. Eh, kids, just let him go. Oh, yeah, I forget. He's 16. Yeah, yeah. And plus, they're kobolds anyway, but still. Uh, kobolds are fucking mean. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm talking to him and your way over there. Um, so I say, yeah, so if you don't know who this Lazarus Cyril is, hey, single-handedly, there were there have been a bunch of legends, and don't ruin legends, because legends are there for good reasons. He single-handedly fought off 25 kobolds and was able to survive that's what the legend was what i asked him was is that what was the real number he said there were five of them he killed three of them and he was able to flee from the other two so honestly that's still quite a feat but let's never ever change that 25 number what do you think that's fine with me sure all right it's just nice to know it I just, I am one for closure. That is all. I don't know, man. Right, if that kid so... starts turning into an airhead, we might have to put a pin in it. But otherwise, I, I got yeah, you. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. But when he starts talking about me only when killing one cult, one goblin, I mean, I was fighting two right there by myself. So, I mean, uh, anyway. Personally, who cares about your abilities in combat? We've both deduced the entire <laughs> situation here. Like, down to a science of what's going on by just looking at things after a battle happened. So, I, I could care less about our ability to kill shit as long as we can figure out what the hell's going on. Yeah, that's more of my skill anyway. Uh, so, we've moved all the things to the pyre. We've gotten the horse to the cart, or actually, uh, Lazarus. What the fuck?! What the hell?! <laughs> oh, oh, God! Is, but it's funny and it's there. Oh god. Um, we have. That's, oh, that's, that's Rex. That's the wizard. Yes. That's yes. exactly who you described. I nearly lost my mind. I was just like, I was like "That's a big dude." I was that's a big Tom Selleck. I mean, come on. I was like, "Oh god, he was attracted by the ale." Are you guys, you're supposed to hide the wagon. What the fuck? <sighs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I say, uh, so we've, we're, we've let the bodies, uh, begin their journey decomposing. We've got Hans and Franz on the cart as best we can. We've got all of this goods, which out of character, by the way, I've written down on my sheet here, um, that we can supply the town with a few more goods. Um, and... We know we must come back here. Is there um is there anything else we must do? No, I think we're good. I think we can we need to hide the two wagons and then um Well, I mean, no, we're bringing the wagons in with us. Never mind. So, we chopped up the log and we kind of put the pieces aside, right? Mm -hmm. Out of character. Yeah. Yeah, you placed them up up there. That's Let's, why I, the I would like to uh, be sure that they're all in a pile. Just, I mean, it doesn't have to be a token. I just, I just need a confirmation that they're all in a pile. Like and a pile? Or is not even neat. It just needs to be a pile. We'll be back in two days. It's going to be a bigger pile than that. But yeah, it's it's a pile of very large. I mean, it's a big fucking trunk. It's freaking huge. It's not even a huge pile. It's more like a small scattering of large logs, very large logs. Yeah, so I just kind of look at him and tell him, do you think we'll be able to uh, get back to here in, say, two days, and these will still be here to mark the place of where we were? No, that looks stupid. That, that was actually better, I thought. Well, 
I'd say the giant, like, scorch mark of, uh... Ah, okay, thank you, yeah. No, that's quite reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Where the fire was burnt, yeah, that'll be there for days and days and days. Possibly weeks. Yeah, I totally agree. Alright, good. I just want to be sure we'll be able to get back here. Yeah. Um, out of character, I need to take a teeny tiny break so I can go pee. Okay. okay. Basically, all, right. all we're going to be doing tonight's RP right now. I mean, now I, I like I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go for hours and hours and hours. You guys, oh. somebody's going to have to cut me off. The, the, the problem is, is, is we're missing we're missing Tom Selleck. Yeah, it'll be okay. We it'll are missing okay. Tom Selleck. I, I'll tell you what though, I am having so much okay. fucking fun with Fifth Edition. <laughs> me too. Me too. I think we'll be okay for now. I think we can go on for until maybe the next encounter. I think Travis mostly enjoys the encounters and not the RP because that's kind of why he's like, well, I'll go to bed. Yeah. Well, to, to work, so. or, yeah. Oh, what time does he have to work at? Uh, morning. I, okay, I don't know when then. Oh, is he still doing that thing where he's working six days a week? Oh, no, no, we're done with that. Okay, okay. It's just his schedule is different than mine. Oh, okay. All right. Um, let me go pee real quick. Okay. I'm going to go heat up some pizza and get a drink from the fridge. Okay. Okay. Hey, Chris. He doesn't have to work for long. Oh, my God. Chris. Uh, hey, hey. What? So, I would like to make a small change to the heal healer. He doesn't have to work tomorrow. Uh, small change. You want to make a change to an existing feat? Yes. Okay. Well, what what kind of change are we talking? Not much. Let me but get to the feat first. Instead of like giving actual hit points, it gives temporary hit points. But it will always give at least one hit point. But those decay over. One every hour, or maybe two hours, until the person takes a short rest, or a long rest, and then they become real hit points. Let me get back down to healer here. Okay, um... Were you using this correctly? Yeah. It's a standard action. What's a standard action? But the, my only question is, is why would you stabilize the creature and give them one hit point when you can just I... heal them for more? No, no, that's, that's not what I was saying. No, I'm just asking what... It makes no sense. You can use it to stabilize or give them a hit point, or you can use it to heal them for 1d6 plus 4. Because that 1d6 plus 4 is only once per short rest. No, they, no, it's, it's, well, only that creature, though. Exactly. So if they go down again, you have to stabilize. Oh, then you get the other one. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, and you were saying you wanted to change that 1d6 plus 4. Let me just whisper it to you. See, if, if I get what you're saying, you want to slightly penalize the feet? <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do that. Wait, what does he want to do? Um, from what I understand, he wants to change the hit points it gives you to temporary hit points. No. But the healer's but it no. it's different. It's different. But they're not normal temporary hit points. That's that's why I'm not quite sure what he's at what he wants. Are temporary the hit points in fifth edition the same as fourth edition? Do they work the same? Uh, uh they last until uh, however long it I believe says. Temporary hit points last until you in, I think it's until you rest. Yeah, they it's until you rest. So that's the same as fourth edition. No, but fourth did they both the same? Fourth edition says it's a I don't think this says that. It's really the same thing, basically. But, I mean, do they function the same? Is the process the same? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, cool. So they don't stack, right? Uh, no, it's, a, it's, it's a similar stacking. Okay. It's the highest of whatever the last one was. That on that one. Okay, temporary hit points are natural hit points, but perfect damage, blah, 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 blah. Because if they stack, then this is a whole different world we're living in, guys. Okay. Healing can't restore temporary hit points, and they can't be added together. If you have temporary hit points and receive more of them, you decide to keep the ones you have or gain the new ones. For example, okay. if you have 12 and you already oh, have yeah. and you already have 10, you can have 12 or 10. Instead, yeah. Uh, so the way we're used to them working? Yes, exactly uh, what we're saying. And they last until they are depleted or you finish a long rest. Hmm. Okay, that's 50. Unless they change it at uh, That's new. The I think in 4th edition it was until the end of... 4th edition it's until the end of the encounter. It's well... Five minutes the end of the encounter. That is exactly what it is. No, I don't think it's exactly... I think it was basically until... The end of a short rest, basically. Because it doesn't care about the encounter, if I recall correctly. Because you could gain temporary hit points and just be like, Okay, we're going to go in the next encounter and I still have them. But you, I remember you could not start a long rest. I, I think that once you started a, a new short rest, then you would not have them anymore. So you could go multiple encounters with temporary hit points. Mm -hmm. I believe in fourth. But in fifth, it's like all rules are off. And because they're, they're like, no, oh, that'd be better if we did it this way. So the thing is, I can't I find them okay. in the. In the uh, I don't know where they are. Anyway, it's probably in the healing. Um, let's move on. Um, so we are all here. Um, honestly, my character does not have a lot of experience with driving animals. He may be able to figure it out. Um, but uh, any anybody can drive a wagon. It's just whether if you can drive it better if you're having it. So you yeah. So what I was gonna do is I was gonna say you don't have to make any checks if you're if you have proficiency. Yeah, well, anyway, I was going to say, hey, Zhang, um, do you have any check, uh, any experience with riding horses or, I've ridden horses before, but I'm not the best. Um, have you had any, much experience with uh, riding horses or driving wagons? i tell you what, I can sum up my experience very, very quickly. Um, I have a lot of experience going over sea, not much experience going over land. I am a sailor and not so much a um, wagon driver. However, I think I might be better at it than you are, just because. You, well, I was I'm, gonna say, have you tried? I mean, did you have to like? Were you one of the people who would navigate and chart course and drive the the ship or whatever? Yes, I was. I was a ship's navigator. Right, yeah. Let let let's let you drive the 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 wagon, and I'll just chill out and hang out. And I'll hang out in the cabin with the goods, because I think that one person, one this person... This is not a covered wagon. But neither of them are covered. No, neither of them are covered. Mine is. Yeah. In the cabin. There's no cabin. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> My bad. I'll hang out in the wagon with the goods, because there's probably something to sit on. Um, there's probably we, we enough just space. just sit next to him in the front on the only chair there. Oh, yeah, let's do that. And I'm going to super keep an eye out for more fucking bandits, because I really did not appreciate that. That was a whole lot of bandits. That like, was. More than, more than you think you should have had to face. But hey, more, that was a more, ton of experience. <laughs> more than we think we should have had to. I like it. But yeah, how much experience? Is experience a thing? I mean, I don't experience, know. I'm in... Experience is a thing, but you're not going to get crazy amounts. No, but I mean, do we get any? I, I have no idea. It's 5th edition. It's a whole other world. Uh, I know I, nothing. I'm going to check something real fast because I can't remember the way I wrote this. Okay. Story. While you it check it out. For the whole encounter or for, for person, I can't remember. So I'm gonna... While I check it, I'll talk to Zhang and Lazarus, and I'll pretend to talk to Rex. Actually, I only talk to Zhang because he's the only one here. And I said, so where, where are you sailing? Oh God! Every which way. Um, I have a really. I, w I would say I've been a lot of different places. Um, Is it just west or anywhere on the other side of the continent? Like on the other side of the of the continent, I um, 
my original, I would say, where you might say I, I, I was from where I grew up during my uh, childhood is a very, very long distance away. Um, so the, the rumors are true. There is water on the other side of the continent. Chris, you might have to back me up on this just to make sure I'm not spouting bullshit. What's that? Because <laughs> I'm not totally sure. But he's asking me if I've been to the seas on the other side of the continent. On the east side of the continent. Um, the east side of the continent. Let me, let me look at a map. <laughs> yeah, of the Sword Coast. Good luck. I no, I was actually going to try to look at a map of Faro. I have to figure out kind of where you put two rivers, actually. It's Faroon. <laughs> well, who says I'd put it anywhere yet? <laughs> well, that's kind of important to the question I'm trying to answer right now. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm going to look at this 27 megabyte picture of Faroon as it slowly loads. Only 27 megabytes? It's actually not even all of Faroon, it's just all the stuff I have made so far. I'm really enjoying this so far, and I'm having a fucking blast, oh, this, you guys. This is the old map. This is the fourth edition ones. There's mountains where there aren't mountains anymore. Not a giant hole there yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, you say to the east? Yeah, that's what he was, or that's what he was thinking he was going to tell me. Let's say to the east um yeah so i the sword coast is huge um i basically asked him so you've been across the seas to the west and he said he's been on the east side of the continent too or i asked him if he's been on the east if if there were oceans on the east side of the continent if those oh, rumors were true would, would not know. okay then he didn't go that far okay. know anything about that so uh, you traveled on the west side of the continent. That's cool. Very extensively, yes. Okay. I was just curious. Have you been to those islands? I can't remember their names. I take a... I don't take a sip of anything. Actually, at, by that point, I would have pulled out a tinderbox and pulled out my pipe and began puffing it, so I take a puff of my smoke. Have you been to those islands that I can't remember what their names are? I guess I'm gonna roll a history check while I'm there's, talking. There's multiple sets of islands out there. I thought there was. Well, well, I'm just gonna roll a history check for just one of them. There we go. Just one of them. Uh, just one of them. The, uh, the the largest set of isles is the Moonshay Isles. Hey, the Moonshay Isles. Have you been over there? Help me. Probably, yes. I'd Both of you can, like, help each other. Just make stuff up as go along. It's fine. It would make sense, yes. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, he would say yes. Uh, I've been there. That's been one of the places. Oh, okay. So what were you, uh, having in your boat while you were sailing? It really depended on the boat, to be honest. Um, I didn't serve with just one crew. Um, the original city, uh, the original village where I came from... Uh, was a port city, and once I finished my training, and, what port city? Um, it's, it was a place called Two Rivers. Two Rivers, I think. Do I know where Two Rivers is? Uh, uh, fuck no. <laughs> you probably don't. You Can I make a history check? I will tell you. You'll have to make another one. The one you put would not apply to it. No. Okay. Ah, oh, I'm not familiar with that place. Is that north or south of here? It's like I would have to say maybe south and then really far to the west. Like oh, at, okay, so it's, it's got to be south of Water Deep. Yeah, I, I would I would I very much have to say the climate is a bit a little bit warmer there. It's a little um, there there's swamps on the outside edges of two rivers. Um, and so it's humid. By warm, you mean like warm and humid, not like warm and dry, right? Yeah, right. Like warm and humid. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Um. 
but the, the the area itself has a very definitive kind of uh, culture, I would have to say, and architecture, and it's it's pretty far out. Like it would be far out as in like crazy, or far out as in like it's just way far. There. Like it'd be months to travel there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It'd take a long time. A very, very long time. Like maybe like like literally months and months. So what landed you in Neverwinter? Um, basically, once I came of age to leave, I, I'd set off into the world to just kind of make my way. I wanted to get enough money for my own ship at some point and have my own crew. Ah. And I wanted to work my way up, uh, kind of learning the, the sailing trade and kind of what, what, it, what goes into a lot of different kinds of shipping and a lot of different kinds of, of goods and going through that. So I've been on a lot of different kinds of vessels. Um, I, a lot of experienced shipsmen. Yes, Even. basically. I am pretty experienced with a lot of different kinds of sailing uh, and a lot of different kinds of ships. I've served on a lot of different ships. Some of them... Um, well, there was the one time I uh, found myself on a pirate vessel by accident, but um, I, I tried not to do that again, and I don't think I did do that again. It was just the okay. one-time thing. Well, that's wonderful. I'm glad I know more about you. Thank you very much. Thing. No problem, sir. And I'm like out of character. I'm just going to you know, create casual conversation about general stuff. Along the way, and I'm going to be uh, keeping high on the perception because now I'm fucking paranoid. I'll assist him. I if I him. see him being paranoid, I'll assist him with his uh, perception checks. With his par paranoia check. That's fine. You can say it. I'll tell him that, too. Like, I'd be like, you know, that would be part of the conversation. You know, if we found bandits within a day, you never know. We might find more within another day. So, I'm pretty sure you're about a day, a day and a half. From that's what I mean. Right? Yeah, if I find if we found bandits within a day, we might find another bandit, a group of bandits, within the day. So, hmm. Yeah, just keep. I would tell them just to keep your eye out. I would. Oh. And then I would you know like, what? Hey, back there! Just remember to keep your eye out. I forgot to mention that. Something you would find interesting, actually, or Jack, you might find this interesting. Um, I would probably, since we've got a day on, on the thing, we're doing absolutely nothing, uh, uh, Zing at some random point would pull out all of his tools that he uses for navigation. He has a full set of cartographer's t tools, an explorer's kit, and navigator's tools, um, and basically he'd even pull out a few maps he made himself of some of the places he's been. That's fucking all out of character, that's fucking awesome. This is a great background. Okay, keep going. But, um, and then, and then, um, let's see, what else would he go into? Oh, actually, you know what? One of the first things I wanted to do while I was in Neverwinter is, maybe you could help me with this, actually. You see, I was looking for some way to repair really extensive damage to something. Um, well, let me, let me tell you the story. Basically, we stopped, uh, there was this, uh, this island, um, that I stopped on with my last crew, and uh, I think yeah. uh, I might have the story a little mixed up at this point. It was uh, it was a couple weeks ago, but we um, got sort of a tip off that there was uh, some buried treasure on this island. We went for it, and uh, the captain was correct. The, the treasure was there and was split evenly with, uh, throughout the uh, crew, per their knowledge. But there were a couple things that were in the chest that I secreted away on my person because so, I thought they might be more something a little bit more in depth that they wouldn't really appreciate the value of. So one of these two things and, and Zing actually pulls this out of his pack and he As shows it. Out of the pack, I say, so so let me get this straight. You guys found some treasure, uh you split the treasure equally ish, but you think you were able to sneak something away that may have been worth more? I don't know if it was worth more or not. Okay, I'm investigating I'm it. Not a, I'm not asking just to take it from you, just being clear, because I don't like to uh, create any confusion. 
but I'm just trying to understand. So just understand, I'm asking my clarif clarification questions. Well, I'll be completely honest. You seem like a very smart person, and this is something that I could perhaps use a little bit of assistance with figuring out what it's for, oh, if you know what I mean. what is it? As you pull, I ask as you pull it out. Okay, so the first thing is he would pull out... Um, a like or a note that looks like it's old and rotting, and it looks like <clears throat> kind of a bit nasty. And he he'd hold it out and he'd be like, "Okay, so I tried to clean this off as best as I could, and it's kind of this old little rank thing." But something I found really particular on this particular note, and he points it out in the bottom the bottom quarter. There's like a little symbol on it. And he turns it to the left and right so it, like, catches the light at different angles. And at one angle, it looks like the face is laughing. And at the other angle, it looks like the face is crying on this, on this like, random piece of paper. And Zing looks at him and he's just, and uh, Zing's like, so I saw this symbol and I was like, that's a really weird random s symbol for, for, to be on just a piece of paper in, in, this, in this thing. So, um, uh, so. <laughs> he chuckles. I, I don't know what to think about that. So I was actually trying to get the, no, the note restored somehow. I was wondering if um, I heard of this ritual called Make Whole, if that could actually fix it. But everyone I went to and I took the note to said that it couldn't actually fix it because it would have to basically... The damage done to this note was done by time itself. So it would take some serious he, kind of... Are you showing me the note? Are you showing me this? Yeah, then I'm I'm holding out the note okay, and um, so what does it look like? So it's a small piece of paper that's been partially rotted. What else is on it again? I think I heard what I heard, but I want to double check. It's a symbol that if you look at it for one way, it looks like it could be laughing, and if face you face laughing, and yeah. Then if you look at it another way, it's a face crying. Yeah. Okay. I, I should actually clarify that slightly. Okay. It's whenever you look at it, it looks like it is laughing or crying. So, so you look at it at one point, it'll look like it's laughing. You look at it again, it'll look like it's crying. Oh, okay. okay. So, so it's not even like turning it back and forth. It's just randomly, you could look at it and it, could, it would be different. Yes. Is it based on how you're holding it, or is it based on... Doesn't matter. Doesn't You can just matter. be staring straight at it and blink and it's different. Uh, okay. So... So then we'd have a little bit of a different investigation. Zing would, would hold I it out, like, and he'd I be like, like... I would like... I don't know if I can do this in 5th edition, but I'd like to try to detect magic. Ooh, um... That is a spell. Magic, I, that's a spell. Edition. Oh, okay. Um, then in that case, I would like to determine the possibility, and I'm going to take a decent amount of time to do this, because we've got a lot of time, so I'm just going to... Uh, if you let me take ten, because I don't know if you can do that in a fifth, but I think you can do that more so than you can on fourth. But I'm waiting you, for you to say it, yes or no. What is it you're trying to do exactly? I'd like to determine whether or not this can come from uh, non-magical means. And by that, I'm, I'm using my knowledge of forgery and inks and various other tools of writing to determine whether or not uh, something like this could be created without magic. Uh, that would be with your, your forgery skill stuff. That, yeah. that is with my knowledge of my forgery tools. I don't have them with me. But I'm just trying to determine whether or not. I'm trying to think what skill you need to use for that, and I'd say you'd, have, you'd look at your because it's forgery. You'd have to use your deception skill. Oh my! Is that a skill? Yep. Okay, deception skill. Am I allowed to use my tool bonus if I am proficient with forgery tools? In this case, I'll, I'll say yes. Even All right, you you're the awesome DM, though. most reasonable dude ever. Okay, we'll see. Let's see. Um, I'm. Attempting to, to determine whether or not, um, plus one, I'm attempting to determine whether or not this can, could be strictly non-magical based on what I see. 
go. That's decent, but I'm just gonna wait. And Or let's say the likelihood. That's a better way of putting it. I'm trying to determine the likelihood of it being strictly non-magical. Like, are no, there inks uh, that can reflect? What? Well, are there are there inks that could do may have that have an effect like that? Uh, uh, yeah, where it's almost random, like invisible and reflective inks, where it's almost random. Well, you know, there are some really weird inks out there that can do some odd things. So that there is a possibility it is non-magical. Um, but you don't think, what I it's think great, it's... don't think it's a great possibility. Okay, okay. So that, that's good. Um, so what I'll tell him is, is uh, as I look at it, um, I think you see me think really hard for a minute. I say, um, you know, I've dealt quite a bit with different various inks and uh, calligraphy and this work. And while it is possible that there may be some rare non-magical materials i think that this glyph on this paper if i uh, am at liberty to call it such i, I think it, that's what it is i think it may l more likely be a glyph of magical origins than something of uh, mundane uh persuasion you know, hang on a second. But I wouldn't be able to determine whether or not for certain it is magical. Not with my current skill set. I've been working on it. I've been dabbling here and there in the arcane. Oh, that. I completely forgot about that. That's now, fine. that was not whispered. Does that need no, to that be? Wasn't. No, it's it's fine. It's it's so vague that you know what we can go ahead and just assume this is the thing instead and just take that out of my backstory because you completely <laughs> forgot about it. I have no idea what's going on. Either. That's fine. That's fine, Chris. Let's just remove that from the equation because we have more than enough to work with with what you've actually given me. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. That's why I put this other thing in. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. That doesn't exist anymore. I'm just gonna take it as the note. So the thing that I did means nothing or still No, you're nothing? good. You're good. This was about something completely different that we were confusing with this that that okay. doesn't exist anymore. So you're fine. You're still on the right track. But everything is still legit as far as everyone's concerned. Like every there's no retconning needed. There's no retconning needed. The retconning was in relation to something that had not brought been brought up yet. Okay, but that's, that, fine. That's, yeah. fine. that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just saying there's no retconning in regards to anything because if we don't know it already, then it's no. not really retcon. It's just if there's no retconning of anything. No. Okay. All right. So then that's what I tell you. I and I'm pretty. I'm, I would say you could tell that I'm decently confident about my ability and my experience. I'm forty something years old. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so here's here's my personal take on this, and I I, I, I relax I, as he continues on. That that does make sense to me. My personal feeling on the symbol is that it is associated with something that is dangerous. When I look at this, I get the feeling like this might be someone's mark or someone's brand. Like someone that's not th to be trifled with. Like this this is – and the reason I want to get this note restored is just to see what the hell it says. Because if – if this treasure did belong to someone and then this is their calling card, I, I want to know what message they left to the people that took the treasure. If that makes any sense. Um, in, in that case, when you say that, uh, I kind of perk up just a, like at least half a second. And, uh, Chris, I would like to first roll an Arcana check and then roll another Religion check. Uh, and then roll a history check to determine if I recognize this symbol itself. The smiley or the sad symbol. So first arcana, then religion, then history. Okay. First arcana, then religion, 
then history. Kana, then history. And this is to see if you recognize the symbol, right? Yes, recognize the happy face or the sad face. Uh, from those two checks, no, you do not recognize it. Those three checks. Oh, wait, you did all three. Uh, I did Arcana, then Religion, then History. Uh, the answer is still, uh, you have not seen this symbol. You are not familiar uh, with it. That's fine, I didn't think so. And as he's talking and he says that, and I perk up and I say, Hmm, well, I'm not really familiar with the, that that face. Either Neither the, the smiley laughing face nor the sad crying face, unfortunately. Okay. I think it might be something more related to... Um the business out uh, on the seas and it, it might be something just to keep in mind um, regarding this but anyway th that's what I came to Neverwinter for was just to investigate that a little bit more because I was really concerned with just knowing what this note originally said the fact that it's old maybe it was uh, into, uh, th this is someone that died a long time ago or their guild or their whatever but anyway um Th oh, that that was I, that. Can I ask Zhang to roll a persuasion check? Because there's no such thing as a diplomacy check anymore. Uh, yeah, it's persuasion, but yes, you can't. Well, what what roll was? Roll me an unintentional persuasion check. If he's tr if he's trying to persuade you, then yes, he needs to. Well, I don't know what else. I uh, roll me a nice check. A nice check. No, if yeah. he's trying yeah. to persuade you, it'd be a persuasion check. Well, I'm saying he may un uh, be a trying to unintentionally persuade me, or he doesn't even know. Still a, that's still a persuasion check. I rolled yeah. a 13. Oh, I didn't see it. <laughs> uh, no, he, he rolled it to, to me. But yes, I rolled, he rolled a 13. What's my... Hmm, I don't really know what to put it against. Okay, well, yeah. Uh, I see pass of that, and I guess that may mean you technically beat it if it equals so like if you hit 14 and somebody has a 14 ac you you beat it right if you meet the ac like if they have 14 ac and you have hello? 14 attack you hit them hello can you hear me we're still here mike yeah yeah sorry uh for some reason i'm a fucking idiot and i didn't put this to the top so a 14 ac beat or a 14 beats a 14 ac right Yes, you hit their, okay. their armor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so then I'll say, uh, yeah, his guard is low enough, and he's not feeling like a big douche, blah, blah, blah. Um, and he says, uh, well, I wasn't really in Neverwinter for, for very long, and I was mostly in uh, Waterdeep for the past uh, 20 or 30 years, so, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. I mean, I just wanted to bring that up. Um, let's see. What else do I got? You know, well, actually, there was one other thing I did find with that. Um, and Zing squints for a second and goes into his pack again. Um, by the way, Chris, on this one, I have kind of a mental perception on what this looks like. And I've had it plastered in, in my brain since you gave the original version of it to my other character. So You're talking about the card, right? Yes. So what Zing pulls out is a what looks like a gold credit card <laughs> with a orange harp on it. And orange harp? an orange harp on it. Like blum harp? Like blum? Like a mus like a musical instrument. Hey, where did Arthur go? Uh, he said he was going to be AFK because he's on the other wagon. And he can't hear you. That's fine. That's kind of lame. But lame. That's kind of weird. But okay. Anyway. Alright, that's, that's... whatever. Arthur the Buzzkill, that's what I mean, he I, is. I can, I can show you a picture of the car. Of the well, car? I'm on the other, like... The, the thing that, that he took out. I can... Oh, you're still here, Arthur. Well, thank God. I was like, I was like, this yeah. is just so fun to listen to. But I mean, I understand yeah, I it's so frustrating. Yeah, I figured just have at least a good time. But I was like, man, what a douche. Well, I tell you, I t I will tell you this much, Arthur. This is all shit. Zing would probably tell you later anyway, like just through campfire he's gonna, yeah, stories. He's looking for information. But anyway, I uh, I didn't realize. I was like, he left roll twenty. 
I didn't realize he left Hangouts, and I was like, man, show. what a what lame dude. Like. Yeah, show show me what the card actually looks like. The card? The card actually looks like. Oh. Wait, there's a picture for his cart? Card. Not the cart. Oh, there's a picture for his card. I hit show to players. It should have popped up. Where is it? I didn't see it. Oh, maybe I just got... No, I only see... Grungeon Roxy card. I see it. It's on. It's called Gold Card, and it's on my screen. Show players again. It did not show up. It didn't show up. Yeah. You make sure my name is on there. Just like put put you know black check on there. This was kind of similar to my perception of what this thing looked like. Take it out of your journal, and then hit show to players. I'm still in the handouts. Oh, here we go. Ooh. So, so it kind of gold card also. Yeah. So I'm I'm like I'm like this thing was also in the chest, and when I saw this, I had this feeling like it was really important. Okay. So Chris, Arcana history religion. I'd like to go. Is that okay? On, on what? On the card. Any of those symbols? Okay. Do I recognize well, any of them? Move over to chat here. Okay. Go for it. Arcana history. Religion. Uh, well, you're pretty sure those two things on a size are just lotuses. I mean, okay. Power. Uh, and based upon your three checks, you're pretty sure that symbol in the middle is uh, the symbol of the Harpers, like the oh, okay. the Harpers. Um, what do I know about the Harpers? Just tell me what check I need to make. Uh, you don't think you direct interacted with them directly, so you'd have to give me a history check. That's what I figured. There it is. What do I, oh, that's not so bad. That's pretty that's decent. Pleasant, pleasant surprise. Better than average. And if you want me to look at like a page and you just want to tell me read the adventures book, then I can do that. I don't know. Like, I always struggle with between the the simplest and okay, fastest. Okay, I'll, I'll give you the the base information because you only pass the easy check. Oh, you only pass the easy check. Okay. Easy checks ten. Oh wow. Well, actually, no way. You, you that's a fifteen, so you pass the regular check. Oh, I pass the regular check, guys. Okay, I'll give you all the information that's on this page. Let's see. Okay, so the Harpers. Well, is, is it in, if it's people. in the guide, I can just do it in the book. I have a general idea already of what the Harpers are. Oh, if you know what the Harpers are, then you... Out of character, I have an idea of what they are. And I'm just going to give... I'm going to tell them the idea. But that's really all I know out of character, and I can read the the rest in the Adventures Guide later, if that's what you're saying. Here, let, just, let me whisper something to you. Okay. But anyway, as you're whispering that... um, Oh. Let's go there and read the stuff on that page. On the read... Okay. Yeah. Um, anyways, what I'll tell them is, uh, uh, I do reckon, I, I tell him I do recognize this, actually. This is, uh, something I've run into here and there. Um, they may have tried to give, an, give me one of these cards from time to time. I can't No, no, them. you don't remember them ever having cards. I don't they care. They don't use cards. I don't care. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> they may have don't use cards. I don't care. I don't remember. And I just say, I don't remember. They may have tried to give me one of these cars before, but they're a group who's supposed to do good things. I'll, I can bring you into uh, details later on, but they're kind of a, a low-key resistant group to bad stuff. And that that's it, that card seems to be of the Harpers. I, I believe it's a a rare-ish card, so I'd hang on to that if I were you. Okay, I will. Uh, and uh, he quickly puts it back in his pack and secures it, <clears throat> making sure he knows exactly where it is. But um, and then he and then he straightens up and he wonders for a second. He's like, "So I have this card for the Harbors, and they're supposed to be like a good organization, right?" Yeah, kind of. They're, um, for the most part, they're pretty good, yeah. They are really, uh, equal, equalists, equalitists, I don't know how you say Equalitarians, maybe? Yeah, equalitarians, <laughs> yeah. Well, what what I'm getting at is... They're I, solid uh, on yeah. a good scale. They're pretty good. 
I found it in the same like box as this note with this other symbol that really just creeps That's me not out. Okay. Bad face or a different symbol than that? The the, the, the the one I showed you on the note where it can yeah, be crying or laughing. Bad face. Huh. That's uh, peculiar. That's a gold card. Okay. Hmm. All right. Can I make a check to determine whether or not this gold card is a common thing or if this is, like, extremely rare? Well, my, uh... what my opinion was... <laughs> Sorry, let me let me add a little bit more to this. I'm sorry. What my opinion was is I was thinking actually, really quick, which of them looks newer? The gold card or the note? Uh, are you asking me out loud? I'm asking I'm asking Chris. Yes. Okay. Um well, you notice that the gold card doesn't have any blemishes or anything on it, but it's also made out of gold and gold doesn't really do that. Yeah. Um but the note looks very old and decrepit. I would estimate that this might be like some kind of a calling card for this organization. And they were doing some interfering with whoever this symbol belongs to. On this old, crappy, decrepit note. Or, and there's some collision with these two organizations. But that's just my... That's just my... That's almost like a conspiracy theory. I have no way of proving that, but that's just my gut instinct. Um, is there a check? A, it still have to be a history check, Mike, because okay. you, do not know, you have not interacted with the organization at all. Yeah, that's fine. I'm totally cool with that. Um, I just want to know what check it is. So I'd like to know, I'd like to make a check for its rarity, and then I'd also like to make a check for what it's, what it's for. What I think it would be for. I don't know what kind of check that would be, but let's let's go with history for rarity. Actually, what do you want me to do for rarity? That's what I, I was thinking. Like, what do you mean by rarity? Just like how many of these have be? have I ever seen this? Is I mean, what's the likelihood of me ever even seeing something like this? Actually, that would also still be a history. Uh, well, and I'm okay with whatever checks. Yeah, so don't his, worry his, about it. Still Name it. We'll make still, check. It'd still be a. Uh history check because it's okay like, that's fine yeah movie. i'm not asking in the sense of trying to get it into my one of my skills i'm just asking because this is how my character would think is I know, I'm, I'm trying to think what it is too okay i have no fucking idea of its rarity maybe common no, maybe you don't, not you don't have any idea of its rarity um but what maybe what it's for what is, what is it for <laughs> what is it for well Let's see, I can still only give you so much information. Cause well, give me all the information you can, because bring it on, baby. Okay, the information that's, a, that's available is... What is this uh, card's purpose? Most likely it is to identify the person carrying the card. Hmm, oh. That is most likely its purpose. Now, as to whether... That but I, I flipped the card on the other side. There is nothing on the other side. Just nothing. Okay. The blank face. You see, you see me like I perk up for a minute. I'm like, hmm. You and do I flip think the it might have other purposes that you don't know of, though. Because yeah, that's fine. Identifying wouldn't make sense. Because why would you carry around a gold card? Yeah, that's fine. But you aren't sure. Of, you you haven't heard of any uses or anything, so you can't really make any true guesses as to what it is. I hand it back to Zhang and I say, that there is one of a kind. Maybe. I don't really know how rare it is. But I'm going to guess it's one of a kind. And I don't particularly know what it's for. But it should identify whoever holds the card. So the Harpers, this faction, this club, I'm guessing, uh, I think with reasonable accuracy, whoever holds this is probably within the Harpers. Now, why it was in your treasure chest, I, I can't really say. But whoever holds this is probably in the Harpers. It may likely have another purpose. And I'm going to throw out a random guess. Maybe open a hidden door. Maybe open a hidden treasure. Hell, it may be like a... Like a... Uh, what do you call those things when you're trying to find water? Like a dousing rod to the Harper treasure. I don't know. You know, actually...
Oh, actually, I've got one of those, too. Well, a dousing rod to the hidden treasure? No, I've got a dousing rod that, um... Leads to water? I'll show you that in a bit, one thing at a time. Okay, well, anyways, it may be a dowsing rod to the Harper's location. I don't really know. But what I, all I can say is that I think it may have a secondary purpose or two or three. God knows how many. Praise Agma. Give us the knowledge of the card, and he does. He gave us some of the knowledge. Um, but in any case, uh, there you have it. I think uh, you have something unique there. It may be... Uh, one of the only of kind, or maybe pretty common. I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure. I'm not familiar with it, but uh, I am familiar with its purpose as far as uh, identifying uh, probably somebody who's of the Harper faction, and probably uh, it does something else. That I don't really know. It's probably something low key. <laughs> No, you stop that. All right. <clears throat> Understood. I'm the best. Okay. So uh, Zing will put both of those away, and then it'll be like, well, um, I think that's pretty much all of the uh, things that have been on my mind recently, finding this treasure and these two odd little items. Um, I'm not sure if anything's going to ever come of these two things, but I just... I found them. They just appeared in my life, and so I. What I'm... was the other thing you're talking about, though? Oh, another another thing. Yeah, that that there's a funny story behind that. Actually, Chris, you might like this. Um, I I kind of created a story for this. If you had other plans, <laughs> I need to whisper you first. Make sure you don't have other plans for this one, because I I, I think I did good. While you guys are doing that, I will get another beer. Have you have you done any expanding on that? I haven't done. Well, okay. I have done some stuff on it, but but not very much. So if you have something about it, you can go on about it, and I'll take and change stuff. Okay. That's perfectly fine with me. I haven't done a lot about it. I think you'll really like what I have, and I came up with this in the last five minutes. Then go for it. All right. When he comes back, I'll, I'll rant. I, I enjoy it when people come up with stuff that's better than what I wrote. That makes it more interesting for me. This is so much fun. Okay. I'm not dungeon mastering. God, this is awesome. It's when you guys just start spouting off things, and I'm like, hey, that's a good idea. Okay, so, all right. here, Here's here's the last thing I want to <laughs> kind of show you, and I, I already know what this is. So, um... Jack minus 13. Ignore. Just... <laughs> well, ignore that, because... That Why don't actually... you trust me? We're just riding along in front of you. I think it's 13 We're... and 8, not negative 13 and negative 8. No, 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 it is. It's negative. Is it negative? Oh, jeez. Negative? Negative trust. Even I don't distrust you. you. I just am... I even gave you a compliment, man. Man, you know those no, no, kids. Anyway, those kids don't fair. respect authority. It's 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 whatever, man. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, out of, out of character, like, I was like, well, that's not really what the legends say, but that's still pretty good. No, and that no was it, like... it, it's not sad. It, it's a flaw. Okay, anyway. I know. I, it's whatever. I don't really care. I'm just having a good time. This is great. You guys are the best. Let's do this. Uh, ra uh, Zang, what are you talking about? Okay, so Zing um, kind of blushes for a second. Then he pulls something out of his, uh, his pocket, cool. and he holds it up. And it appears to be... What is a combination of a jade and an iron key? Um, so and an iron key with the jade engraved. It's like it's, the... it's like a combination of the two. And if you look at it, the jade part of it appears to be some sort of like dragon that's wrapped around what appears to have been the basic part of the key and just decorated it in this really fancy, crazy design. When you uh, say the basic part of the key, are you talking about... Like, like if you looked at the key really hard, and if you just really took... Hard. Okay, if you just took the uh, the iron part of it out of it, it looked fairly like just a normal like key to like a cell or something. But if you took the iron part out of it, it would look normal like a key. Or if you if you're just looking at only the iron, it would look normal like a key. Like a very very normal bland key. But it appears that there's some kind of jade decoration that's been forged around it. So it's like wrapped around it. Yes, that's like in the shape of a dragon, and it has like ruby 
inset eyes on it and looks super fancy as a result of that wow. like extra work that's okay, done. Okay, so I see. Okay, so this is much better because I was really not sure. This is a much better description, and I look at that and say, "Well, uh, that's probably got to be worth a, 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 a fucking lot of money." Uh, well, it's worth more <laughs> than that. In character. It's worth more than that. This is actually the key to the um, meditation chamber at my monastery in my original village that I came from. Um, and you know how yeah, sometimes... Yeah, you know how sometimes when... Um, I would like to insight uh, about how old he is, plus or minus five years. How old uh, Zang is? Yeah. Sure, roll, make, make an insight check. He, he's already said it, though, in character. Oh, he did? Yeah, you're pretty sure he's like 16 or 17. <laughs> Zang is? Yeah, I'm 16. Oh, good lord. Yeah, <laughs> so I would say in response to that, you're uh, quite well-traveled uh, and well-practiced for being only 16. Oh, I know. Sailing's ridiculous, man. You go everywhere. I, I oof. Anyway, um, yeah, so... And being from a monastery... Yes, yes. Like I said, it was it, it was a, a long ways away from here to River Smith. So anyway, what was, was the monastery? Uh, it was in the port city I told you about earlier. Ah, two rivers. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm sorry for interrupting. I just like to keep my facts straight and understand. It's it's okay. Don't worry about it. Please but continue. anyway, um, so this uh is actually the key to the uh, meditation chamber. Um, and oftentimes, uh, as part of my training, um, I'd kind of go in, I'd lock myself out, light some incense, and just kind of try to get some, um, try to be at peace with basically the inner beast. Like, being a half-orc, I have a lot of, I struggle with a lot of natural tendencies to beat the shit out of things indiscriminately, as you might be able to imagine. Um, and I had to get over that fairly quickly as part of the training that I received um, at this monastery. And so, so let me get this straight. And out of character, uh, you see, like, as the wagon is going along in the conversation, you see him kind of, you see uh, Blackjack kind of, like, stand up and start going to the back. And he goes into a backpack and pulls some stuff out. Mm -hmm. And he says... So you were in your monastery, and this was uh, from your cell, or from a s sanctum in the monastery. Right. In it, it was it was for the meditation chamber. The ah. I ended up having to use the place so often that they just made me the keeper of the key for it. Like I needed so many sessions to just kind of clear my mind and try to get the, all of those. Uh, like primal rage sensations out of my system and relax and meditate that they let me just keep the thing, you know? Um, and whenever anyone needed to use the meditation chamber, it was my duty to let them in, lock it. And then after a certain time or whenever I was told to reopen it and, uh, they would come back out. But I mean, it's pretty important if you're doing this kind of training that you have complete, total absolute no one bothers you sort of thing going um so out of character you're driving you're still driving the uh single stallion right mm -hmm. okay so you see me uh come back up and i come up with the mug and i hand it to you and i say here while we're traveling you might as well have a sip or two or three or whatever but here you go um don't drink and drive kids wait did you just get ale Yes. Those barrels are not tapped. What do I have to do to tap them and then put a cork in them? I mean, you'd, it's like... You'd have to have a, a, something to tap, like a... Drink. Like a mallet? And or a shovel? You do know what happened if you did that, right? Please don't shovel the barrels. It, it would probably go... And then I put a cork back in it. With a shovel? <laughs> no, I don't put a cork back in it with a shovel. I put it in with my hand. No, no, I mean, like, you'd make a really weird hole with a shovel, and all you'd lose a whole lot of the ale. No, but they come, also, they come with so a little hole in them. They come, they come corked, man. They yeah, come a, corked. There is, a, there is a cork in the bung, yes. 
Yeah, so you take out the bung, you take out the cork out of the bung, and then you put it back in. You would be there... ruining a cask of ale. No, I wouldn't, because I'm pulling it from the bottom. There's no air down there. Is there a problem the with me doing that? The bung is in the top of the barrel. The bung is in the, the, the barrel is sideways, though, the barrel's not sideways. No. Wait, oh my god. Ah, <sighs> okay, fine, I tip the barrel over with all my strength while we're riding. Uh, I mean, assuming I'm looking around and I, I'm not trying to put the barrel in a situation where the barrel is going to fall off the wagon. All I'm saying is, is you know, if you destroy, if you ruin, if you open this barrel in any way, you will not be able to give it to the people who have rightfully bought it. <sighs> being delivered. If I open it in any way, it's ruined. They would notice. They would notice. Okay, that's fine. I'm I'm cool with that. But there's a difference between they would notice and it's ruined because I can tell them how much we drank out of it. It's a it's freaking thirty gallons at the very minimum, bare minimum. It's very likely thirty three gallons, I think, of of freaking ale. I'm pouring like two mugs. Well, the thing that well, okay, my and I know okay. some will splash here and there, and I'll and I, I you know, well, my I, character's what I'm saying is, I don't know how you think you're getting the ale out. I mean, through the bung. It's just a hole. Yes, it's and gonna if pour it's out. Bottom, it's going to pour out half the barrel in about a minute. It's not gonna pour out that fast. Well, a minute. No, it wouldn't pour out that fast in a minute. Okay, maybe not quite that minute, but it'd be a really, it'd be a lot faster. Yeah, than I'm just, I'm sticking. just holding the mug in front and splish splash, splish splash, put the thing back on. What do you want me to do? I'm trying to be friendly. I'm trying to be a, a pretty cool dude. What, do, what checks do I need to make to put the bung back on? All that jazz. Well, first you need to make a strength check because when they put those in to seal them, they're really in there. It's not that hard to put those back in. <laughs> Just make the strength check. <laughs> He's back in ye olden days. They aren't meant to be open. Am, am I able to make some sort of check to determine how difficult it will be to put it back in? Because I'm basing this on out-of-character experience that it's really not that hard to put that plug back in there. Because it's not... There's only so much flow and so much pressure that can be created. So it I'm. Wouldn't be, it wouldn't be terribly difficult. It wouldn't be terribly difficult. Okay. So then, in that case, I will make my strength check to put it back in there. Okay. So I've taken it out. I'm pouring the mugs. I'm putting it back in there. There's my strength check. That's a great. That's, that's not so bad. No, that's that's pretty, pretty fucking good. I was mildly surprised by. That. Your strength check is enough. Okay, but I mean, so, so I mean, maybe two or three or four mugs or whatever of liquid is splashed out because, I, you know, I know that it's not going to be perfect. But anyway, so I go back up and I hand you a mug, uh, Rex, with ale in it. It's Zang. Oh, Zang. What did I say? Rex. Okay, I was like, I know not to say Lazarus. Anyway, I, I at least I not, did not say Lazarus. Mm -hmm. All right, so Zang. Anyway, I hand you a mug with ale in it. It's pretty obvious that it's ale. It's it's cool. Just imagine imagine Zing is a Chinese a half orc, and it makes everything way easier to remember. So he's not, but it it, it helps. Just trust me. Anyway, I have no idea what that's doing. You, you, you guys noticed that that Tom Selleck noticed that you are getting alcohol and not including him. Tom Selleck can suck my ass. He's in the yeah, wrong well, boat. I can't get him ale on the other cart anyway. So Zing Zing goes uh, awesome, thank you. And then he'll uh, he'll take his time drinking it and savor the flavor. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's just something along the way. And I'm like, I know we're having a conversation. And I'm not like cutting you off. I'm just getting this out while we're talking. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so anyway. Uh, so this key was for the, uh, the med the meditation chamber. Ah, yeah, the meditation chamber. And, um, Crazy I, orc. I, uh, 
Yeah, I'm saying that sarca- you It's very obvious I'm saying that sarcastically. Du- well, during my youth, I pretty much was. I uh, I had a lot of anger issues, and I'm I made copious use of that meditation chamber. They made me the kind of the key guardian, but just because I used it so damn much, they were just like, "Well, if you got the freaking key all the time anyway, you might as well just make a responsibility out of it." So I'm referencing I'm referencing the the. Uh... The socioeconomic standard or dictation uh, or stereotype that orcs must be crazy. That's what I'm saying. No. And, and and there's a reason for that stereotype. Yeah. Zing is very aware of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, so he's so uh, basically this uh, this key here. It's it's a fairly large key, and it's for a very very large store. Um, it, it opens that, and I've noticed. I don't know if it's just me, but sometimes when I am completely just like lost as hell uh, even out in the ocean i have no idea where the hell to go for some reason my nav- navigation's f- screwed up all my charts are wrong my compass points around in circles is spinning for some reason and i have no idea where to go i have taken this thing out and no shit pointed it in a random direction and i felt it like get chilly in my hand and then I mark off that direction, sail that way, and end up being in clear waters in less than, like, five hours. Hmm. That's peculiar. And I've done this so many times that I I have a tendency to just kind of use this as a, as sort of a, uh, a last-ditch, like, effort. I don't know if it's the, the key's lucky, if it's been blessed somehow, but it just has... Steered me right when everything else has fallen apart uh, in more ways than one um, over so the years. If it, if it works all the time, why not just use it all the time? Because it doesn't work all the time. It tends to only work really when I need it, like oh. when everything else has gone completely wrong. Like sometimes, so you, you sometimes I get bored. I'm just like, man, I really need a good place to pee, and I pull this key out and I point it in random directions, and I feel like the thing has almost burned me just because it doesn't like what I'm doing to it. But I'm, that, I mean, that might be just mental so you perception. you end up, like, peeing in, like, an amphitheater or something, and you're just, like, in the middle of everyone? Right. Like, something like wow. that. Wow. That was really, that was oddly specific, and you agree. That's got to suck. Well, That's I mean, I, I'm giving you a, mat- a rhetorical scenario. That didn't actually happen, but you get the gist of what I mean. It seems to be kind of half right, half wrong ish and all right we will discuss your amphitheater but um so what are you asking me of this key well i was more or less just telling you uh a rather embarrassing story and uh just letting you know if you ever see me pull this thing out when we're in dire straits it's not because i'm crazy it's because because the the fecal matter has hit the uh uh, rotating wind device. Exactly. Ah. Hmm. Okay, that's a cool little thing. Okay, and then Zing will put the uh, the key up, and uh, he will also cough into his hand and state as well. Um, to be completely honest, I actually set sail from my um, home city with this thing in my pocket, and I forgot to leave it with them. And I didn't realize it was still with me until I was three days out of port, and it was way too late for me to turn the hell around. So, in Jack's fact, laughing at that. In he fact, you got the key just because you forgot to leave it. Exactly. That's great. And he says, he says, well, I don't know you for very long, but I'd like to make a toast. To anything and- in particular, sir. Yeah, and, and while, uh, well, maybe two toasts, actually, yeah, two toasts. Okay. We'll go with two toasts. And while I haven't known you for very long, or the other fellows behind us, I'd like to make a toast. Uh, two toasts. First toast. Champagne for our real friends, and real pain for our sham friends. Here, here, and he will <laughs> try to clink the mugs. Clink. <laughs> I'm so like, looks annoyed. <laughs> Tom Selleck can suck my ass. So, do we notice Tom Selleck? No, you don't notice Tom Selleck. Okay, okay. <laughs> I just need to be clear, because if I notice him, I'm going to try to apologize. I'll stop the caravan. I'll get him a beer, because I'm a cool guy. Um, but I don't notice. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe not even very long, maybe five minutes later, because it's just sipping 
and just kind of absorbing in the nature and whatever. I already told you I was going to toast the second time. I say, here's to all the friends that wish us well. All the rest can go to hell. Yes, yes, they can. Clink. This is By a good the way, toast. those are the two fucking funniest toasts ever. That first one is the best. Yeah. Um, I was out of character. I was at my dad's house in Lexington this weekend, and I'm like laughing my butt off because I'm like, this one is so funny, but I cannot remember it. And then I say it, and then him and my stepmom, they crack up, and no, none of us can stop laughing, and we're just, like, just sitting there. We're at this brewery, and we're just laughing. But anyway, that's... I keep forgetting we're on semi-live TV, and then recorded, and then uploaded to YouTube. <laughs> so I, I gotta try to not, like, go on some sort of stupid, dumb, dumb rant here. This is really fun. It's cool. Uh, I think anyway. we're we're actually like getting to a pretty good stopping point for the night. To be completely oh, honest, no, it's there. like we're midnight, dude. Town. We're not even in town, and plus we haven't even like talked to the other character. Well, the other character yet. So, all right, Chris, we talked a lot. Have we gotten to town yet? Yes, because you talk so damn much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we talked about other stuff along the way, but who? fucking cares what the other stuff was uh let me pull up a little so describe us what happens when we're arriving uh describe well us. probably talked water deep politics a little bit and another random stuff did that show it to everybody sure but i won't really know um all i i, I still had the gold card open i haven't seen anything else yet though Oh, it's only in my journal. That would if we fun. talk water deep politics, I may know some things, but I'm not going to be, like, the biggest expert. Ah. Oh, so you can just go ahead and show us the whole map. So, from where do we enter? Because I did not expect... I almost expected to be, like, right up against the mountainside. I, oh, I no, it's, not, it's, not, it's actually in the foothills of the mountain. It's not okay. actually in the mountains. Excuse me. So, where would we be entering the town? I, it looks like there are two main points of entry. Just a second one. Something's going off in my house. I'll be right back. Okay, we'll be here. We're entering from the southwest. Okay. Where that little farm is. Yeah, I see that. I got you. Um, Underneath the compass road. That is where you're coming in. The only reason I'm showing you that map is because it has no labels on it. Does the farm look like it have, has a sign on it? Uh, no, well, not like, really. It's just hanging it's sign. Just farm. Okay. Do we see any signs of the town as we go in? Uh, yes, there's actually a sign on the trail. That uh, says, like, Fandalin? Yeah, it says, it says, it says uh, Fandalin, yes. Fandalin. Does it, uh, have a population number or something on it? Uh, no, no, it does not. Okay. You can, you um, can see some various bits of rubble of the old walls and such. Oh, okay. I see that now. Which um, works with what you know about the area. So, Zhang and I are in the lead, so until he gets back up, I assume he's going to do whatever I think is fairly decent. So, we just go into whatever the most main road looks like. And I'd like, um, on the way in, if possible, if you would just point out any uh, signs or or uh, significant buildings that we see. Okay, well, as you're going through town, which is that, well, it's the snaky road that looks like it's going through the middle of the town. Yeah, and I guess it goes to the left and then back into the middle of the town. Uh, you'd probably end up going, and where the road forks left and right, you'd probably go left towards that large uh, empty area, the large yep. town square. And then we'd end up going to the town square, yeah. And you'd probably end up after that going north from there if you continue. No, no, we're not continuing, I'm just saying. No, I'm <laughs> telling you. Yeah. Uh, but if, as you go into town, that square building. Yeah, the super square building. Uh, one, square within a square. Uh, yeah, it's a super square one that's uh, kind of on that bend. The opening is facing north. Uh, almost, for, almost north, yes. Northwest. Uh, that, there is a sign on that that says Fandalen Miners Exchange. Okay. And you also know that's not where you're taking the goods. Yeah, I know. It's not the provisioners. And as you uh, continue on uh, down just past that, that where there's the, the house and the two little buildings with it, 
also on the right side of the road. Okay. There's a sign that says woodworking on it. Oh, okay. Looks like there might be someone who does woodworking stuff there. All right. There Can we keep going the forward? Directly There's... across the road from that has a sign. Which is says... the big building on the left? Yeah, that big building on it. Okay. Like it has it like a... A second building? Kind of thing. Yeah, huge fucking building. Yes, that says Lion Shield Coster on it. Okay. Wait, and wait, let me go through here. Let me see. What was the square building again? That was a minor exchange? Yes, the square building says Miner's Exchange. And then the, the um, and other building was the woodworker. Yes. And then the next building was what? Uh, the building across from that is the Lion Shield Coster. Lion Shield Coster. Okay. Alright. Let's keep going. We're going into the square. What do I see when we get... Oh, and that big orange building. On the yeah, right. Yeah, that big, big orange building on the right does have a sound. That is the Town Master's Hall. Okay. Uh, if you continue north from there, you reach... It's a big uh, square. Arthur, um... Arthur actually just got disconnected. Um, his internet just died, oh, yeah. apparently. Oh, dang. Well, I'll still describe stuff. Yeah, let's continue and okay. wait and see what happens. You can see that there is this area. It's obviously a town square. Um, at the yep. northern end of that, you can see... Uh, not, not, not so much in great shape, but it's there. You can see a shrine of some sort. Of some sort. There's no sign. Well, you, as you get clearer, you know that it is actually a Shrine of Luck. Of Luck? Or of Timora? It's a Shrine of Luck, which is a Shrine of Timora. They're the same thing. Yeah, I just didn't know if it would say, like, Shrine of Luck or Shrine of Timora, or if there's, like, a symbol of Timora, or if... It has her symbol, which is a coin. Okay, okay. You can see it. Shrine of Timora, okay. Also, That's what I would consider it. Past that, uh, to, the, to the east... Uh, sorry, west... You can see um, a large open area of grass. That's okay. It's probably a place. That was the it large. It looks like a little hill. Yeah, it looks kind of like a little hill on the map. Okay, I'm just checking. And uh, let's see. There is oh that gray building, the gray squarish building. The gray. Okay, the big gray on just the right. Right, just to the right of the. Okay. That has a big old sign on it that says Stone Hill Inn. Okay. And. Uh, Ah, uh, yes, hmm. just, and just past that on the left, there's one that says Smithy. So the orange one is Smithy. That's about as far as we would go, the, br the, brown one, the brown one just past that is the Smithy. And, well, no, oh, the I, little you one? would actually use like, the, the brown building just past Is the it the, the one with two buildings? Yeah, it looks kind of like two buildings. They're, they're brown. Oh, we wouldn't even right. get that far. Yes, you would. Because I would get to the middle. That. Huh? You would because of what's after that. Well, we wouldn't, because we get to the middle, and I would stop and say, I'm not really sure where we're going. Oh, okay. Then you'd stop. Yeah. Trying, we would stop in the middle of the square, and I, I'd talk to uh, uh, Zhang. Well, actually, we do need to... I would like Arthur here for the next part. He, he said his internet basically cut out, and it doesn't look like it's coming back. Um, he's waiting on it, but it's it's pretty much down. Okay. Um, in that case, I'll go ahead and let you know, but I think then this is probably the best place to yeah, end this is tonight. a good place to stop. Well, I, I say give him five minutes or ten minutes or whatever. Um, but basically, Blackjack, <sighs> yawn. I just gave you a map so I'm not just describing everything. Really. Yeah, I know, I know. I, like, that's one of those things for me that it's a very tough decision, and if you, I, yeah, either way is okay for me. Well, it was basically, well, I actually had to make this map because the only one that I had had labels on it, so I had to get rid of all the labels. Oh, okay, yeah. But, I mean, as far as making a map or strictly describing it, me personally, I'm okay with either one. Um, so, Blackjack would stop the party, and I'll go over this probably next week or whatever, but yep. Blackjack would stop the party... And, uh, um, he would point out that I, that we don't know where the provisioners are. We just did arrive in the middle of town. Um, we do, it's a Stonehill Inn, right? 
Yes, there is a stone hill in. It's right there. That's the big square building. That's the big gray square building. I do see the big square building, the stone hill in right there. Um, my goal would probably... I don't like speaking in third person to say like what I would do. But I think in this case it's not so bad because uh, not everybody's here. But what my character would probably be, be uh, probably be doing is telling everybody I think we should go to the Stone Hill Inn because I'm not familiar with the, this area. I'm not familiar with this town. The buildings we've seen so far, none of them are the provisioners. We do need to get to the provisioners soon so we can take care of this, essentially, this extra weight. You know, we don't need this cart. We don't need this horse. Honestly, we could probably sell the horse itself for our own gain. Um, we can't really sell just the cart, obviously. We'll have to figure out where to go with that. Oh, yeah. We saw the town master hall on the way in. So that'd be probably be the third party where we uh, sequester the gold, hundred gold that we get based on this ledger. Um, I do have business at this uh, at Tamora's shrine, which we've seen so far. That can wait. Um, but yeah, I think uh, first I do think. In addition to getting rest, we also do need to uh, determine where is the appropriate place to provide these provisions. You know, being the, uh, I can't remember. It's like Bear Juin, Bard, I can't remember. The provisioners. Wait, you're asking where the provisioners is? Yeah, because I can't remember. And I knew... I'll write it down. Okay, the provisioners... It was on the ledger. Oh, it was Barthans Provisions. Is, is Barthans. It? Barthans Provisions. Yeah. So we don't know where Barthans Provisioners is. We do know we need to find it, and we could probably find it here in this inn. Uh, yes, they can tell you. Yeah, I'm just talking to Zhang and, uh... Um... So are you guys actually doing something, or are you just saying that's what you're I doing? don't think we're saying that. I think we're, I think at least I am slowly winding down to a decent stopping point. Yeah, I think this is a good I'm waiting point. for Ross to say stuff. Yeah, same thing. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm cool to, to kind of uh, leave this where it is. I was cool to leave it where it is as we were toasting. I feel like that was a great place to step off for the night, to be honest. Um, but, uh, this is fine, too. I actually thought you guys would get a bit farther tonight, but I also wasn't... <laughs> Welcome to my world! I wasn't expecting that first encounter to basically be, well, everybody goes in separate directions and gets slaughtered. I don't know that we all exactly went in separate directions, and, and, <laughs> if, um, so I rolled two attack rolls that didn't hit. If I, If one of those would have hit... We would have been in much better shape, at least for my character. I, because I could have essentially taken care of two of those monsters by myself, no problem. Um, Zing and... Uh, I think they did the right thing. Zing and... I think they did fine. I think our party really did okay, honestly. Oh, you did. It, I think... Did well, well, I'm not saying I okay. You I'm, I think we okay. did... I think we made mostly the right choices. Zing and Lazarus uh, discussed tactics before that even, like we were, they were discussing tactics on the way to the encounter of how they would work well together, and they acted ac uh, accordingly when the fighting actually broke out. That's what they were talking about and why they were distracted. Yeah, I guess my character didn't really actually expect anything, considering we had such a large group. Yeah. But it's cool. I mean, it, it it happened and backstory stuff and. Um, no, I think that was okay. I I, I was a little anno I was a little uh, nervous. I wasn't sure. Uh, I, I gushed a lot about backstory things to, uh, but but, and I wasn't sure if that was gonna annoy Chris or not. If he wanted me to keep things not as 
like not tell it's a lot of your, stuff. It's whatever your character. Anything, anything your character would reveal, you should reveal. Well, the reason he did it is because we are basically rolling with what Zing considers is a professional investigator. Who I don't know how you know that, but not well from just watching how he how he acts and exactly what he does. He seems like a very smart person. And someone willing to actually talk to him and not treat him like he's a, a five-year-old or a complete idiot because oh. he's part orc, <laughs> you know? So so considering those things, he was just like, oh, my God, someone finally to hear me out and listen to me talk about all the stuff that I've run across lately. And he's just like, okay, well, man, I, I, better, I better take advantage of this now and, like, show someone this stuff that actually cares because God knows when I'm going to find anyone else that can help me figure this shit out. <laughs> I'm so sad. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm just a dude who's like, hey, we've got a day. We might as well do some talking. But that yeah, too. They had nothing else I, to talk yeah, about on that, yeah. on that trip. So he was just making the best it. use of time he could. No, so. I think it was good. Um, it stinks kind of that the wagons essentially were separated. I know I, you know, my conscience is out of character. My conscience is heavy with the weight that Travis wasn't here. So there wasn't any dialogue between Travis and, um, well, better put between Rex and Lazarus. And I think that when we get back next week that there is maybe some benefit to them having a dialogue and we can sit and listen through whatever they think their dialogue is while they're on the wagon and you can describe to them what you see uh from me going to the kegs and maybe we edit some of the the, the previous stuff and, you know if, if he would have yelled out and said hey get some for me you know i may have probably gotten some for him and we could have stopped the wagon for a minute and... The only reason I said anything is because I'm pretty sure Travis would have said something. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm saying uh, next week we can add a bit in about that and we can see how they would react. We can also see... Um... So we can see how they re react and maybe that changes what I did a little bit. I don't think it changed like, oh, uh, you know, from a... It wouldn't change and... I don't think it would change like from the end effect. I don't think it would change the end, but it may change some of the change some of the means. Excuse me. And then also maybe um like whatever the dialogue is. I'm just curious to hear if they have any particular interest. And if they don't, then they don't. But that's okay. So like I'm cool sitting through and listening to that, but I you know, on my conscience I feel kind of kind of crappy that basically it was just me and Ross talking for a long time while uh, Arthur was kind of sat there with nothing, you know? Yeah, and, and I'll be honest, half the reason he's probably not super into coming back right now is because of the split in the party and how he really couldn't react to anything that was being said, and that was probably frustrating him, to be completely honest. Um, if I can... By uh, probably frustrating, did he tell you that was frustrating him? Because that's different than... No, I'm getting, I'm getting kind of a gist of what's going yeah, on and just... Guessing. Hey, hey, you guys want to know something? What? What? You could have simply hitched the other wagon to the back of your wagon and had three horses oh. full of both. Yeah, we could have, I guess. I didn't think about that. That would have been the best. I really didn't think about that. I didn't know you could actually do wagons that way. You could make it. Work. You can because you can be creative. Like you could, you we could have hitched the both wagons together. We could have had a small caravan and had the, uh, the two mules and the one horse just carry everything. That probably that would have been the best way to go. I didn't think about it. That's my fault. But it's fine. Um, I will send Arthur a message, kind of an apology. It's not really like an apology, but it's kind of like. You know, it kind of stunk that Travis wasn't there, so I'm sorry that we didn't, I don't know, like I said, like I, I kind of feel, guilty is not the word, but I'm, and shame isn't quite the word either, that's quite a strong, but I'm kind of annoyed at the very least that uh, we weren't able to, that he didn't really have a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. 
But when we get into the, like other stuff, when there's all four of us at the same time, it'll be awesome. Okay. All right, that's it for me for the night. Um, I'm closing down stream. Anything else you guys need from me? Um, oh, right, Chris. How did you like my improv on the whole key thing? I liked it. That was very good. Okay. Can you, can I you didn't even know it was improv. Down? Yeah, it was totally improv. I made all that up off the top of my head. Down. So I have it. Yep, no problem. Um, one note um, that I would make, and this is totally at your discretion, and this it's a two-way street, so I'm totally open to input, too. Um, I would recommend not necessarily thinking about particular places, but thinking about maybe some times just... Throwing in some pauses in there, Ross, where other people can, uh, where, where other people, and this is, there's no easy way of saying it, but where other people can talk so that it's not. Yeah, so I was that, grandstanding a lot tonight, wasn't it I? It wasn't grandstanding. It's just sometimes when you go, uh, 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 some other people can add more stuff and that gives you time to think. And then also from your perspective, you can get, um, feedback to where, other people tell you stuff and you know that they're listening and understanding what you're saying. Okay. You know what I mean? Well, so like I, that's some, some of the time I was just trying to like, let you know that I'm listening and I'm letting you know that I'm understanding some of the stuff you're saying. Um, and then other times it's like, let me add on to that. And then it's like, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm going to stop doing that and I'm going to let you go. Okay. Uh, well, I, I had a complete thought that I was trying to get out, and my brain was just, like, having trouble processing all of it once. So if I was, like, leaving gaps and then trying to finish what I was saying, that was the reason. Um, no, no, it's like sometimes sometimes just leave a gap there, and then let other people chime in. Okay. Um, I was... Um... I was having a hard time finding spots where I could jump in and confirm what you're saying so that you know that I'm listening, you know? And then also add on a bit here and there for the story and then add on a bit of my background. And then I don't have a problem with letting you keep going about your stuff because I like listen to it. But it's like at some points you're like, um, um, um. And I'm like, man, I can tell you some stuff. I can relieve you of your um duty. And then you'll get back on to your, I know you'll get back on to your story without having to um, 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 um. Okay. If that, I don't know if that makes any sense or not. It, it does, but I have trouble talking, Mike. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, like a lot of, a lot of that was, I just, I had something I'd come up with off the top of my head and I was having trouble remembering all of it. And I was trying to just get it out without losing my oh, train yeah, of thought train of thought yeah yeah and so sometimes i was like i got to look for a gap i got to be very very ah, i got to cut that gap right there and i got to start going with some of this stuff when i get yeah. better at storytelling i don't think it'll all, be that hard for me to do no, that no it's all good it's like i'm trying to help you out um by finding where that um is and then i'm going to try to not cut you off, but cut you where I can go do stuff. And while I'm doing stuff, you you're, you can do your processing jazz where you can be like, oh, that's what I'm doing. But at the same time, I'm uh, reverberating what, you're tell what your story is. I feel tired now. <laughs> Thanks I for playing tired. with me tonight. This no, was a no, this was no, a fun that's session. I that's not and that's not even that's not even constructive feedback. That's like what you're doing is awesome. You've got a really good story. I think everybody has good stories. I need to hear Travis's story. Um and I'll eventually get to that. I just like hearing people's stories. I like the dialogue because it's fun. I don't know why. Um, so far, it almost seems like Travis is playing Peter. No, it, uh, it seems like Travis is playing Sting. Well, That's I mean, what it seems like to me. do you want yeah. to know what his character is? He it's is two flowers. He is a wizard who wants to be the world's greatest thief. 
Jesus. I think he already told me that. Why do we have a party full of rogues? Jesus. See, well, we really don't because I. The wizard. I think I'm gonna end up being a uh, like a eighth level rogue and like a ten level wizard and like a two level bard and a one level cleric, something like that. Interesting. I'm yeah. going straight monk all the way to the top, man. Man, monk is <laughs> monk is my only my only class. This character is completely and totally 100% a monk. That's great. I like. I totally appreciate that. Like, as long as like that's what you need to be, and those are the skills, and you're like, yep, that's my character. I totally get that, and that's excuse me, totally freaking cool. Yeah, I'm ready for it. All right, thanks, thanks for game game tonight, and uh, see you guys next week. All right, uh, recording is out and all that jazz. Oh yeah, I actually need to turn my stream off. So what happens? What happens?